Foster and Ream at the tackles. Nelms at the middle guard. There you saw the linebackers, the defensive backs, Lane, Gale, Hill, and Bell. They have some hitters back there. There's one note about the field. It's not in very good shape. They had a rodeo here last weekend. That field is really hard, and there are some fair spots on it. You know, it really is. I understand Don Prayel has got a ball game here against Cincinnati Monday night. Said we're not going to play unless they do something about it. I'm not sure that they can do that much about it, but it isn't in the best of shape. And we just have to see how the footing is and everything. We're ready to go. This should be a dandy, Fred. Tiamalo is deep, along with Bill McNabb. And a kick is going to be taken by one of the short men, and he doesn't have much. He's right about the 20-yard line, perhaps the 21, and knocked down right there by the Ohio State defense. Marcus Merrick, an All-American linebacker, the man that got down and made the tackle. And you're going to hear the name Marcus Merrick and see number 36 a lot tonight out of the Ohio State defense. There's Earl Bruce, the Buckeye coach. He has done an outstanding job with this Ohio State team. Well, he's been a winner everywhere he's been at in the Ohio high school ball. Maslin, for one, at Tampa. At Iowa State now at Ohio State, they've won their last six ball games. They've played extremely well. Young, no surprise, straight back to throw, looking on the far side, and has the pass complete at midfield. It was picked off there by Neil Ballholm, a 6 senior from Vancouver, Washington, and they came out gunning her. And uh, interestingly enough, the... Uh, Buckeyes have a stunt on both backers coming. Notice how Oates does the job on Mary. Here's the lefty Young staying in the pocket, throws the ball, and look at the catch here by the acrobatic Neil Balholm. Good for 26 yards, and we knew it was going to be this kind of a start. I tell you what, don't anybody go away. This has been the wildest bowl in the country every year. Kirk Pendleton near side, Mike Edo on the far side, the tight end. Gordon Hudson, an outstanding receiver in his own right. Young's going to put it up again. Standing in the pocket now, Chase out. He's going to be hit and dropped at the 46-yard line. There'll be a loss on the play of a couple of yards. Good pressure that time. It looked like they were going to lose their uh, their lane, but uh, Ohio State did an excellent job coming up uh, with the tackle for Ohio State. Number 83, in this case, uh, Scott Leach, the rover, and they'll go to the wide side of the field. Ohio State will play that 5-2 defense with the Rover. I got to believe BYU come back to the short side some. Second and 11. Now home wide right. With the tight end in motion that time, and the throw is complete across the 50 at the 52. With Gordon Hudson, an outstanding receiver, the tight end, knocked down by Sean Gale and Marcus Merrick. Hudson this year with 67 catches, good for 928 yards. Here's another look as they had a little in-tackle twist on. Here's Hudson. This is the guy who had to take Clay Brown's place, and quite frankly, Lavelle Edwards didn't know that uh, they'd be very strong at tight end. All Hudson did is become an All-American. He can flat play the game. Time it's Pendleton wide left, Edo to the right side. Imalo and Pettis are the splitbacks. They haven't ran the ball yet, and they're not going to again. Young firing up the middle. Oh, a tremendous catch by Gordon Hudson, the tight end. At its first down, Brigham Young, very near the 25-yard line of Ohio State. What a catch. There's the story on Hudson. That's his 69th catch of the year. That'll put him up close to 1,000 yards. That was good for 22. Once again, they have a twist on, and look at BYU area block it. Number 65, Neil Caldwell. He's just doing an excellent job. This is a guy who was on a mission, Veracruz. He's a lot older, Fred. He's 26 years of age. They call him the fossil and grandpa. Didn't look like a fossil there. A good job and great catch by Hudson. Scott Colley, wide right. Pendleton, wide left. Young with a handoff to Tiamalo, and he is stacked up by the middle of the Ohio State defense. The defense outside linebacker, Kurt Curtis, got a hand on him in a hurry. First running play for Brigham Young, and there just wasn't much there. Ohio State appeared to be ready for it. Look at Earl Bruce. They ran a little draw. You'll see that a lot from the Cougars, and Curtis stayed at home. He's got 4'8 speed and a 40. Extremely hard to block. You take a look at him on, the, uh, on film, that is Fred. He's tough to block. That time they had a slant right on, and uh, Ohio State gets it correctly. Edo wide right. Pendleton wide to the left side. Young is going to put it up again. Heavy Fraser on, and he is dropped all the way back at the 36-yard line. It's going to be third down for Brigham Young. 
Tatum really got the job done that time. They call him the beast. He'll growl a little bit when he gets after you. Here's Tatum. Boy, the seconder did an outstanding job. Lane, Bell, Hill, and Gale. Young just could not find anybody because BYU did a tremendous job playing the, off the, uh, the tacklers, but then Tatum comes around and he uh, throws him for a seven yard loss. Young looking at third and 19. Pendleton wide left, Golly wide right. Young straight back to throw. And he is gonna get it away in trouble and it's gonna fall incomplete. Kurt Curtis got pressure on him, brought him down. Ohio State went to the nickel defense that time. They did a tremendous job. Curtis, the guy we were talking about earlier, this guy's got good balance. He's a very fine all-around player and once again, very tough to block. 6'2", 206, just a junior. Kurt Gunter's gonna set up a field goal attempt here. The ball spotted at the 35 at the line of scrimmage and it's gonna be placed down at the 40, looks like the 42 yard line. It's gonna be a 52 yard attempt. And Gunther's longest this year has been 48 yards. So if he hits this, it's gonna be his longest field goal of the year. Kick is down. He has enough, does he? A little short with it. The kick, no good. And there's timeout on the field with 11 minutes, 17 seconds left in the first quarter here at the Holiday Bowl in San Here at Jack Murphy Stadium, out comes Ohio State for their first offensive series. Tom Zach, the quarterback. And Brad Dwelly starting at a tight end in place of Frank. Williams wide to the left side, Anderson wide right. Spencer the tailback to the ball, and he doesn't get anything. Knocked down behind the line of scrimmage, Kevin Walker, the strong safety, came up and just drilled him in Ohio State, losing yardage on his first offensive try. Lost with two at second and 12. A little toss sweep that time. They pulled Jim Carson, the big tackle. And Walker just did an exceptional job as he uh, comes up, uh, scripts the interference himself. Rodnax and Spencer, the split backs this time. Spencer, there's a hole up the middle, and he is up across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Kevin Walker again, the strong safety. On the tackle for Brigham Young. Pretty good game for Spencer. He's at the 41. It's going to be third down four. Another look is they uh, pull a guard this time. Billy, I beg your pardon, the tackle, Billy Roberts. Tim Spencer, the second-team All-American. You can see why. He squares those shoulders up extremely quick. Normally they operate out of the eye formation, this time with uh, uh, the basic wing set. Good yardage. Tom Zach dumps one to Spencer. He slips one tackle, and he has first down yardage to 40 and trips up from behind at the 35. And again, Kevin Walker, the strong safety, with help from Brian Hansen, a linebacker for Brigham Young, and Ohio State came out of a second and 12 hole and has the first down, and Tim Spencer, the man that did it, and the way he closed out the season, or six straight games, he averaged 158 yards down the stretch when Ohio State won six in a row. How about the explosion as he gets 23 that time, Fred, and just a little simple swing pass. Excellent execution by uh, Ohio State. A lot of people don't think they can throw the football. That is a myth. First and 10 Buckeyes at the 36. Spencer again with a handoff. Look at him run inside the 35, the 33 yard line. Timmy Spencer. Boy, I'll tell you, we'll be calling his name a bunch. He's a straight up sta uh, stand up uh, uh, style of runner. A very avid weightlifter, Fred, and it really pays off. He started in junior high school when he had a bad shoulder, and he's been able to really carry through with it. He's a superbly conditioned athlete. The thing I like about Spencer, he'll blend that speed and power. Just under 1,400 yards on the year. Williams, outstanding receiver, wide left. Anderson getting single coverage, wide to the right side. This time the back's in the eye, and Williams in motion. Tom Zach. Fake to Brodnax, pitch to Spencer, he's got room. 30, 25, out of bounds near the 20 yard line at the 22. Greg Peterson, the cornerback, came over to chase him out of bounds, and good blocking on the right side for Ohio State that time. Boy, are they right, watch him run the option. Lucan, the All-American guard will pull and make sure nothing comes through. Tom Zach gets it off quick, they're able to get to pass Number 47, in this case uh, for the Brigham Young Cougars, Todd Scheller, outstanding backer. BYU used to play a straight 4-3. They play a 3-5 now, and uh, Lucan's little steel block was the difference in that play. Good yardage. Good read by Tom Zach. He never hesitated when he saw Spencer had room. Spencer again. At the middle, stop cold that time. Jimmy Gale, excuse me, in the game of tailback was the man with the football that time, and Brandon Flint, Chuck Ian, along the front. For Brigham Young making the stop. Jimmy Gale, who picked up 600 yards, running as a backup to the tailback. John Frank now in the ballgame at tight end. 
couple of good tight ends in this game. Well, we've talked a lot about Hudson, but uh, Frank doesn't take a, bat, a back seat, that is, to anybody. There's a pre-med student who has got as good a technique as you'll see. Blood next, the fullback, Gale, the tailback in the eye. Second down and a long eight. Now it looks like Tom Zach checking off. And he might have been just about out of time. Tom Zach wanting to throw. Now he's going to try to get out of the pocket and drop at the 20-yard line. Chucky and the nose guard stayed home and did his job and brings down Tom Zach at the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and a long eight. Play action looks like they wanted to go to Williams, their outstanding wide receiver who does run good routes, but nothing doing the BYU secondary, particularly Tom Homo, did a job. And then Chuck Ian, who was all league this year in the Western Athletic Conference, got the job done. His papa played some football at Colgate. He's a 6'4", 245-pound senior out of Layton, Utah. Anderson wide right. Williams wide to the left side. Spencer back in the ball game. Gets the handoff. And send around to Cedric Anderson, and he is nailed by Brandon Flint. Cedric Anderson came off his wide receiver spot, took the handoff from Spencer, and Brandon Flint was just sitting there waiting for him. Well, you know, Brandon Flint is an excellent pass rusher, and he's thinking pass all the way, so he just blows through there. And look at Flint. He's got good speed. He's got good size, too. 6'3", a 241-pound junior. That's a nine-yard loss. So Ohio State now will attempt the field goal. Rich Spangler, a freshman from Geneva, Ohio, who hit seven out of 16 this year, is gonna set it up. The ball will be placed at the 38-yard line, a 48-yard attempt. He has hit a 47-yarder this year. The kick in the air, long enough, and he got it. Longest field goal of the year for the freshman, Rich Spangler. The Buckeyes are on the board. Ohio State takes the lead here with 6.54 left in the first quarter our score at the holiday bowl Ohio with State. herb brown upcoming on espn monday december 20th at 8 p.m college basketball marquette and minnesota That's all the different rule changes uh, uh, i think it's going to be exciting just to see what happens if people can keep it straight <laughs> well it will and you can't see college basketball anymore anywhere than you can see it on espn McNabb and tia mulla deep for brigham young Casey Tiamola is going to take the ball short of the five at the four-yard line, trying to find some room up the middle. He is really a battler, Tiamola. He's knocked down shy of the 20, and it was Glenn Cobb, a linebacker, that got down and did the job for Ohio State. So Brigham Young sets up the offense now. First and 10, and they're going to spot the ball at about the 18-yard line. You mentioned Cobb. He's the other backer beside Marcus Merrick. Doesn't get a lot of credit, but he's a good hitter. Uh, just an excellent football player, and this Ohio State defense has really come along. For that matter, Fred, their whole ball club, as we mentioned, they might be playing as well as anybody in America right now. Look there from the Ohio State bench, Dave Young, more than willing to get the ball in the air, sets the Brigham Young offense. Great job by the offensive line of Brigham Young, getting Young time to work. He still is wanting to throw the football, finally gets it away, and it's complete to Gordon Hudson, the tight end. What a tremendous job by the Brigham Young offensive line. The ball up to the 32-yard line. First down, Glenn Cobb brought Gordon Hudson down with help from Doug Hill. It is a boxing match in there with Tidwell, Oates, Eldridge, Alafua, Stroth, and they just do an exceptional job. Are they disciplined? They spend 45 minutes a day pass blocking, and here's where it pays off. Ohio State, Fred, is playing exceptional defense in that secondary, uh, particularly Hall that time. And that is just excellent. Young now four out of five for 66 yards. That was a great piece of football by the offensive line and the defensive secondary both that time. First and 10, Brigham Young. Steve Young fires, nearly intercepted, knocked down and incomplete. It was Sean Gale. The cornerback who had a hand on the football for Ohio State. It was intended for Mike Edo over there. Saw him play some last year. He had a stress fracture. But boy, this guy is back. He's very strong. He'll bench 300 pounds. Almost comes up with the interception there as he really anticipates well. I'll tell you what I like about him. Not only is he physical, Fred, this guy can run the 40 and 4 or 5. So Jimmy Gale's little brother isn't too bad. 5'11, 192, a junior out of Hampton, Virginia. Number 12, you're looking at there, Garcia Lane. Good strong secondary for Ohio State. Second and ten. Brigham Young, their own 32. Collie wide right. Young 
took a look at Pendleton on the far side, and he is trying to get rid of the ball, and he's going to be sacked. That time it was Kurt Curtis. They call him a linebacker. They're stand-up defensive ends or outside linebackers, whichever you want to call them. Tatum Curtis, and that time it was Curtis, the first man that got to him. Something happened that won't show up in the box score. Number two, Gale moved up and really put a hit on Hudson. That's the guy they wanted to go to. That uh, created some problems. Here's Curtis, the guy we've been calling in the early going a bunch. He just had a twist on with his tackle, Jerome Foster. But give credit to Gale. It doesn't show up, and he's the one that caused it. Big loss of 12, but third down 22, Brigham Young. Pendleton goes wide to the left side. Mike Edo wide right. The tight end Hudson in motion. Now goes back the other way. And whistles in. Third down 27 now after the five yard penalty. Young again getting tremendous protection. Fires the ball complete. Across the 40 at the 41-yard line, it was Neil Ballholm that made the reception. And they're a little bit shy of the first down. That was a heck of a job by the Cougars. The uh, Buckeyes were in man under. They zoned the deep, the deep half, and somehow they find Ballholm. BYU will have to kick it away, but uh, once again, that's just an excellent pattern by BYU. First punt of the game will come with 4.36 left in the first quarter. Mike Meese on the field for Brigham Young. He kicked. As you look at the play again for an average of 45 and 6 tenths yards this year. That's Garcia Lane deep on the return for Ohio State. Nice, the fifth leading punter in the oh nation this year. Oh, heavy rush on that time by Ohio State. Garcia Lane at the 20 with a bit of working room. Look at him come up the middle of 35 to 37 yard line. He was knocked down there by Dave Neff. Down by number looking at the crowd, 53,000, Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, timeout here with the board, and out they come in the eye, Broadnax the fullback, the tailback, Tim Spencer, Tom Zach fakes the handoff, Spencer fires to Williams, complete, far side, inside the 50, the 48-yard line, Greg Peterson made the stop, and Gary Williams just caught a pass in his 48th consecutive game, counting bowl games, he had 44 regular season games, and now has catches in four ball games. The man just is there, game in and game out. Really like the call. They come out throwing on first down. Tom Zach has got such great confidence now. Earl Bruce sat him down early in the year to keep him away from the Bluebirds when things were going bad. And now him and uh, Williams are an excellent combination. Well, he came back. Spencer got hot. And the Buckeyes won their last six ball games. And you mentioned in the beginning, Irv, maybe playing as well as anybody in the country right now. That's Brodnax, the 250-pound fullback, and look at him, bull straight ahead inside the 45, near the 40, before Brandon Flynn, a defensive tackle, could haul him down. I think I might want to tackle, uh, uh, tickle a Lions backside and tackle him. That guy is a load. They played him some at middle guard. He doesn't get a lot of credit because Spencer packs it as we take a look at the BYU sideline, but Brodnax <laughs> has got pretty good explosion. You might have another Pete Johnson right out here. Brodnax, 6'3", 253. The look on Lavelle Edwards' face Looks like he thinks maybe he has to tackle Broadnax. <laughs> Again, the eye for Ohio State. Second down a yard. Long count by Tom Zach. Broadnax again, banging straight ahead inside the 35. Has the first down at the 33-yard line, but there's a flag on the play. Did so get a hanky out there from the Lions and Bucks and right. A uh, look at Earl. He says, why did you throw that flag? New look. <laughs> Anderson Williams both wide to the left side. Put the tight end right now. Tom Zach's going to throw it, looking up the far sideline, and he was going for the tight end who was on the ground and throws it out of bounds incomplete. Craig Peterson, excuse me, it was Thad Jemison, the split end, who he went for. Good Craig Peterson was over defending. Good defense that time, Fred. Beside Peterson, as you mentioned, Kevin Walker, the strong safety, safety that is, was helping out. So uh, we're faced with the third and 11 here. Three to nothing. There's another look at what's going on. California ball. I saw Bowling Green couple of weeks ago. That's not a bad football team. They do a good job. Kevin Slayton and Bud Wilkinson will be there. The Tangerine Bowl tomorrow night. Auburn and Boston College. Sam Rosen and Paul McGuire on hand for that. Time's out. Gets hit. Dumps the ball incomplete. He had a receiver out there. The pass is legal. David Oppu, the linebacker. And Mike Morgan, a defensive tackle, getting heat that time on Tom Zach and the Buckeyes will give the football up. 
Up he was on a uh, Red Dog maneuver. Boy, he can get after you a little bit. In high school, he played a little basketball and volleyball, so you know he's an athlete. Deep man for Brigham Young. You saw him. Number 19, Greg Peterson. But all Edwards, the punter, averaged 39 yards a kick this year. It's a wobbly kick away, and it's going to be taken fair catch at the 15 holiday bowl. And Irv, surprisingly, not as much scoring in the first quarter as I would have thought anyway. No, the defense have uh, kind of uh, been like uh, a rubber band. They've stretched a little bit, but have not been except for the uh, long field goal. I look for BYU to start going to their backs more. They'll throw swings, circles, and fans. Plus, Young can run. They've got an excellent little boot action play. When they get some field position, you'll see it. He sets them in the eye this time. Hamilton is the fullback. Stinnett the tailback. Pitch out Stinnett. He wanted to hand the ball off and just misconnected. Garcia Lane came out of the secondary to close the play down. I believe that they wanted to get the ball to Neil Bauholm. Appeared to be that way. Garcia Lane kind of took that play away. He's so quick and he's very competitive. And he came up, he had contain on that play from uh, that left cornerback slot. The guy is playing with great confidence now. What a difference when you really believe. And, and that's uh, quite frankly the case with a guy like Lane. Edo wide right. Kale goes wide left with Kirk Pendleton. Looking for Pendleton up the middle, complete at midfield inside the 50 to the 48 yard line. Kelvin Bell, the safety, made the tackle and did Steve Young lay the football in there that time? Hey, you tell me how because Doug Hill, number 27, is going to put a hit on him. He will not see this completion. There's Doug Hill. They sandwich him in between three people. Unbelievable. The line does the job. That's worth 33 yards. I'll tell you something, uh, you couldn't throw it any better than that, and uh, Pendleton did a pretty good job just keeping his eye on the football. Oh, he really did. First and 10, Brigham Young at the Ohio State 49, a minute 55 left in the first quarter. 3-0 Ohio State. The Cougars with a big strike on first down. Or second down, excuse me. Now the pass complete to Scott Colley inside the 40. He's very close to first down yardage. Sean Gale, the cornerback, knocked him down. Scott Colley, 188-pound senior from San Jose, California, with 16 catches on the air for 282 yards. I'll tell you, Brigham Young's receiver, I'm not sure the same guys haven't played for 10 years. They just keep, they look the same every year. <laughs> of course, uh, they do have some older kids, too, because we'll talk a little later on in the show. They do uh, go on a mission. There are nine of them who uh, completed that program. Pendleton wide left, Edo wide right, split the running backs, and Young's going to put it up again. This time it's... Wayman Hamilton, the fullback, out of the backfield. Irv, you called it. They're inside the 35. They've got a first down at the 31, but a Doyle Wood on the stop that time, and they did go to the back. Well, you talk about a screen, and somebody buries somebody. Bart Oates, the center, number 50, 65 mils Petwell. The left guard just get over and bury the rover right here. That is not the rover. I, my mistake, that's Sean Gale. Look at them drill him. That's a fine play. That's... Uh, the uh, eighth completion for Young. He now has 142 yards. 51 seconds left in the first quarter as Brigham Young comes out in the eye. Ballholm, Ballholm is wide to the right side. And now Steve Young didn't like what he saw. Oh, take it. And the Senior Bowl, Saturday, January 22nd, 1 p.m. Eastern. Jim Budd and Paul McGuire all on hand. ESPN will just simply bowl you over during the holiday season. High formation, Brigham Young. Hudson, the tight end right. Ball home in motion. They pitch out to him, trying to get by one man, and he's speared at the 40-yard line, and down he goes. Outstanding job of defense by Ohio State on that side. It was Orlando Lowry, and as a linebacker who stayed home and made the play. Well, you know, when you say stay home, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to trail with one man on every play and not just pursue. And Lowry, from that right cornerback or right end, depending on what you want to call him, just does his job. Too many times people pursue, they take the angle, and in not, not this case, Ohio State very well coached on defense. Pendleton wide right, Edo wide to the left side. It's now second down 18. That play has to hurt. Steve Young trying to overcome it. Firing Hudson, juggles and catches. Oh, what a tremendous catch again by Gordon Hudson. John Gale made the stop. Hudson made the reception. They're still shy of the first down, but what a big, big catch. This is the guy who's getting married in July. You talk about following it all the way into your hands, not hands this time, hands singularly. That's his fourth catch for 52 yards. 
this is a guy that they just didn't feel could be as good as Clay Brown. Now I wonder what Lavelle Edwards would say. Outstanding catch. Look at this. It's really a one-headed catch, Irv, and he finally pins it to his face mask as he lands on his back. Just a tremendous play. We have come to the end of a quarter at the Holiday Bowl in San Diego, and at the end of one, Ohio State three. San Diego, the Holiday Bowl. We go to the second quarter, 3 nothing Ohio State, and Brigham Young third and five, Irv. Well, it's something. BYU minus 26 yards rushing, but they've uh, thrown the ball for 154 yards. OSU 22 yards rushing, 37 through the air. Ball home and Colley wide to the left side. Young splits the backs. Gets a little heat this time, intends for Colley, complete inside the 15 at the 12 yard line. First down, Brigham Young. Kelvin Bell, the safety, brought Scott Colley down after he made the reception. Colley is senior from San Jose, California. Young doesn't get a lot of mustard on this. In fact, it looks like Gale is gonna pick it off. Look at the offensive line do a job in the trenches. Here's the ball up in the air, and you just don't think it's going to get there. Gale coming through. Can't do it. Colley, a big reception. BYU is uh, in great shape. First and 10 at the 11-yard uh, line. 3 nothing Ohio State, but Brigham Young threatening. Hudson, the tight end right. Pendleton and Edo, the wide receivers. Flag is down. Wayman Hamilton, the fullback with a football, driven out of bounds. It's a great pick play at the goal line. There's a story on Young. 10 out of 12. Watch the wide receivers. They're in a slot, and they pick as well as anybody in the game. Ball home and Colley go wide to the right side. Jordan Hudson, the tight end left, but ball home in motion. Young looking in the end zone. The receivers collide, and the pass falls incomplete. Ball home. And Colley were in a collision down in the end zone, I believe. They got all tangled up, and they may have been trying to pick. Well, they were. They came back. They were in uh, reverse twins, used motion to get uh, get open. There's Cosmo, the team mascot, and it looked like they did collide in. Yeah, I believe you're right, Fred. They were trying to pick. <laughs> ball home and Colley come off. Now Kirk Pendleton and Mike Edo check back into the ballgame. There's Cosmo, the Cougar. He's always a good athlete. Uh, uh, you make a good point. I saw him dunk a basketball. I think we were at the same ball game. Yes. Except it was a different mascot. <laughs> Edo and Pendleton wide to the right side. Young pass batted in the air and it's going to fall incomplete. The Buckeye defensive line, it was Roland Tatum, the man that got the hand on the football, and all of a sudden Brigham Young looking at third and six, and Earl Bruce yelling something to the Buckeye defense. There's his four year record at Ohio State. The man is standing at Iowa State twice, the Big Eight coach of the year. And back to his alma mater, what a job he's done. Had Arch Schleister for four years. Boy, they were in great shape. They staggered a little bit earlier, but I believe now they've got everything squared away with Mike Tomzak. Here's Lavelle Edwards. It's a big call. They need one right here. Ball home and Colley. Wide right. Third and six. Brigham Young. Third and goal at the six. Young. Ball home. Touchdown. They got Neil Ballholm in the corner, and Ballholm has been the man in the Brigham Young offense that they have been going to, and the Cougars jump in front. Some kind of call by Lavelle Edwards. They did come out with a pick play. They wind up, wind up with a touchdown here coming out of the slot. They swing the back to hold the linebacker, and then the pick play opens it up for Ballholm. Boy, these kids catch anything. If it's in the ballpark, they're going to hang on. If I've seen Brigham Young teams for a few years now, I can't remember when they did not have good quarterbacking, good receivers. Kurt Gunther will attempt the extra point for Brigham Young. 6-3, the Cougars at the moment. The ball is in the air, and it's 7-3. So Brigham Young on the scoreboard, shut out in the first quarter, but here they are in the second quarter now with 13.56 mentioned at the top. They throw it early to sell season tickets, and then they get conservative. Not this guy. They throw for a living, and it's, it's been extremely uh, tremendous over there in Provo. Lavelle Edwards came to BYU as an assistant 10 years, and he said, I came here in 62 because they were running the single wing, and I was the last living Mormon that knew anything about that <laughs> offense. <laughs> you see Brigham Young on the sideline. Ohio State. Trying to return up the middle, the 20 to the 25-yard line. Jimmy Gale up across the 30. A good return by Jimmy Gale. It's first and 10 Ohio State. The Buckeyes down by four. Rick Peterson making the tackle for Brigham Young. Last time Ohio State had the football, they came out throwing pretty good. In their first series, they ran the ball very effectively with Tim Spencer. Got to believe that Earl Bruce will start going to the sprint draw with Spencer. You'll see some option. Let's take a look one more time at the touchdown. This is Young. A lot of poise. Gives you that little slingshot right there. 
Eo Balho with a touchdown reception. Now first and ten Buckeyes. Tim Spencer, who has been the workhorse, stopped and about the line of scrimmage. Chuck Ian, the nose guard, was there. Todd Shell, an outside linebacker. I want to mention Todd Shell just a minute. Irvy, 6'5", 210, a linebacker, and high jump, 6'10". He's something. He was a high school All-American. He's married, as are several of the players on BYU. Got one uh, one child. He had recovered four fumbles this year, and he had 49 unassisted tackles. So I'd say he could play a little bit. Gain was the yard, second and nine. Buckeyes. Tom Zach has him in the eye. Now checks off. Williams wide left. Anderson wide right. Pass complete. Williams on the far side makes the reception. He's stopped there by Tom Homo, the right cornerback. Homo running him out of bounds, and it's going to be third down for Ohio State. Once again, Tom Zach went to the audible. They shifted from the eye, flexed to tie it in. In this case, uh, Williams was on the, on the uh, split side. A little quick out. We're faced with a third and three. Good football game here. The crowd likes it. Very much involved. Both teams well represented. $400,000 a club watching an appearance in the Holiday Bowl is worth. Beautiful weather. 55 at game time. Up and around 70 today. Look at Spencer. 50. Look at him go. 30. Spencer at the 20 and they're not going to get him. Touchdown Ohio State. Oh. You think that he could smell six points. <laughs> well, I hope to tell you he could smell six points. Look at his teammates. He got excellent blocking up front from Craig Pack, Joe Lukens, and Jim Carson, but he did it himself as he broke through after the three-yard gain. He just broke out of the linebacker's grasp. I believe it was Brian Hansen, and you're talking about a great back. Here it is again. Look at him shrug those shoulders, square up. Number 27 coming in, has a shot. 35 has a shot. 27 for BYU is John Mannion, the uh, strong safety, and Tim Spencer gets his ball club ahead. Some kind of run, 61 yards. Tim Spencer, a 212-pound senior from St. Clairsville, Ohio's Richland High School. He has carried the ball six times tonight for 82 yards. And the touchdown. Kick is up. And good by Rich Spangler. There's timeout now with 12 minutes, 55 seconds left in the first half of this football game. The score now. Ohio State 10, Brigham Bill right now. I'm excited about college basketball. North Carolina State and Louisville are going to match up at Freedom Hall in Louisville. I'll be there along with Dick Vitale. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, December 21st. North Carolina State, Jimmy Valvano doing a good job down in Irvin, Louisville. There all the time, Lincoln and you might play. see them in Albuquerque come March. I hope to tell you. Jimmy Valvano, one of the funniest guys going when he went to North Carolina State after being at Ione. He came back to New York, said he knew he was in New York. A uh, guy uh, he was walking by, and he said, what time is it? The guy said, what, do I look like a clock? He said, I'm back home. <laughs> Bangler hits the football and hits it well. The Amalu takes it right on the goal line. Trying to come straight up the middle. Out across the 15. Knocked down shy of the 20. Pretty good hitting going on on both, kick on both squads right there. I was going to say, uh, you talk about uh, very short yardage on the return, but boy, some folks are just knocking people around. Let's take another look at Spencer as he just runs out of uh, the grasp of number 27, John Mannion, and then he is gone. You talk about picking him up and laying him down. That's his longest run of the year. He now has six carries, 82 yards. That's an average of 13.7. That is a good back. Kind of felt like Earl Bruce would come out and run the football that time because that's what they do best. That's what they want to do. They'll force BYU to stop it, and then they'll go to the uh, play action. There's the injury that's for Dave uh, Neff BYU. Being right. off the field, and he's holding that right wrist. 10-7, Ohio State, 12 minutes, 50 seconds left in the first half. Out come the Cougars. Ball home going wide right. He started the left side, got mixed up. Slot left for Brigham Young. One running back set in behind Steve Young. Young fires up the middle. And Jennifer Hudson, and it's almost intercepted. Dropped in, completed the 25. Marcus Merrick, the linebacker, got a hand on the football and could not hold it. Hudson went for the one-handed catch. He couldn't hold on, and Merrick almost had it, then dropped it. The guy that was open was Tamaya, number 20 on the side, but... Uh, Young a little high with the pass that time as he really didn't lock up the front foot. And fortunately, Hudson is able to battle around and keep Merrick from intercepting it. They did come out with a new set that time. Single back set up. We'll look for that some more. You're looking at the Brigham Young bench. Merrick, an All-American. 6'2", 216-pound senior. Playing his last game in a Buckeye uniform. And what a player he has been. What a set of linebackers Ohio State has. 
Young, second and ten. As time fires, it's complete on the near side. Young pass. Scott Pettis was the man who came up with the football. That time they got it to a back coming out of the backfield. Pettis is really scrambling and fighting. We'll take another look. This is a walk-on. His father played at Utah State. I thought he did an extreme job right here as he fans out, makes a fine catch. That wasn't easy. Here's what I like. He keeps his balance and battles for the first down because uh, he just is going down. It's going to be third down and 10. He got to the short marker. I beg your pardon. Young wants the first on this one. He's going to go upstairs and 10 for ball home incomplete at the 45-yard line. And the Cougars will have to give it up as Garcia Lane has ball home well covered. And Doug Hill, the rover, was over along with him. Young just kind of threw it up for grabs going alley-oop. And uh, I made the mistake of calling it a first down, and they had lost all the yardage. So BYU has got to punt it away. You are talking about Merrick before, uh, Fred. Merrick needs nine tackles tonight to break Tom Kuzma's record. And the thing that's so impressive about that, more teams are throwing the football. You don't get that many opportunities to tackle people nowadays. This guy is something else. Garcia Lane, the deep back. Mike Mees, the punter. And a good one. Again, he's fifth in the nation this year, averaging 45 and 6 tenths yards a kick. And blocked by Ohio State. And the Buckeyes have it at the 12. Cedric Anderson was the first man that got there. Big defensive play by the Buckeyes. And this Tomzak talks to Bruce on the sideline. They've got an opportunity. That was no accident. Cedric Anderson is a wide receiver, but he is a game breaker, and they're designated punt flyer. Look at him extend. That isn't oh. easy. You practice that every day, jumping into a mat. Well, I'll tell you, and here's the guy that uh, early in the year, Tomzak was tentative thrown to him, always wanted to go to Williams. Then he started going to him. Excellent play as they explode off the ball. Cedric Anderson showing you how it's done. It's like a coaching clinic. That is the second punt that Ohio State has blocked this year. And the Buckeyes have the football in a 10-7 lead. They're at the 11-yard line. And now they're at the 7. John Mannion, defensive back on the stop. Simple little lead play is Vaughn Broadnack, 6'5", 252, 6'3", 252, I should say, is leading over Bill Roberts, and Roberts is 6'5", 270. He's got the ability to just blow you off the line of scrimmage. Good yardage for Spencer. Second and six at the seven-yard line for Ohio State. Tomzak puts him in the eye. Jim and Gale inside the five. It's going to be third down. Marv Allen, a middle linebacker, on the tackle that time for Brigham Young. The Buckeyes just pounding away at the middle now. I have third down in the yard. Fred, the best call in this situation is a quarterback sneak because we'll take the middle linebacker out of the action. In this case, Afu. Got to believe that BYU will be in that 6-1 down underneath submarine. Let's see if they go with the sneak. With the running back. Fake to Spencer, and it's Tomzak in the end zone. Touchdown. He faked the handoff to Tim Spencer and kept it. You think that wasn't a gutty call by Earl Bruce? The guy a lot of people call conservative. Third and one. He didn't go for the first down. Hey, that is a great call. You got a 252-pound fullback sitting there, Tim Spencer, who may have been the best running back in the country the last six games. And you make the right calls, tell the quarterback, just keep it and score. And what's interesting, because a lot of people will say Earl Bruce is too conservative. And anything about that call that was conservative, that's a sensational call. Ohio State leading 16-7 to now with Rich Spangler. Will attempt the extra point. Tom Zach holding. Spangler to try to point after. Good snap. Spangler's kick. Up and good. And timeout now with 11 minutes, 14 seconds left in the first half. The score now, Ohio State 17, Brigham Young 7. Third round, Fred White back at the Holiday Bowl. And Ohio State has just scored on a Sally Rand. Little, uh, little bootleg around the, around the left side by Tom Zach. They just do an exceptional job. Everybody looking for the fullback, and Tom Zach takes it off to the left side. So his ball club leads at 17-7, Fred, and I don't think anybody's disappointed with what's going on. Three minutes and 46 seconds of that second period. 21 points for the Buckeyes. Let's see if we can take another look. Here they come. This is Spencer, exceptional running back, so everybody's going with him, and everybody's full, including our cameraman for a minute. Tom Zach has got cake as he waltzes in. Piamula deep. 
Spangler set to hit the football for Ohio State with 11-14 left in the first half. The Buckeyes have scored 21 points in 3 minutes, 46 seconds. Tiamola picks it up at the 11. The kick was short by Spangler. Oh, and he got wrapped across the 20, about the 24-yard line. Down he goes. Roland Tatum, a linebacker, got down and held a big closing out sale right there. I hope to tell you, that's called punching a ticket, and uh, Roland Tatum did it. Steve Young has got to really get something going now to establish some confidence because Tim Spencer took over and really got the job done. Then the, uh, the block punt by Cedric Anderson, and all of a sudden Ohio State has got that Mr. Momentum on their side. Let's see if Young can hit a few. Golly and Paul Holm, the wide receiver, split the running backs. Young, Tiamalu. Good working rim across the 30, and then he was closed down at the 33-yard line. Hit hard by Doug Hill, the rover. Interesting on Tim Ayer. They took him just as a uh, second thought, really. Lavelle Edwards got him out of the junior college, and he was the insurance, and he turns into their leading rusher. This guy uh, played high school baseball. He also catches football. He's caught 20 balls this, uh, this year for the Cougars. Casey playing his hometown. He's from San Diego. Pendleton and Edo this time the wide receiver. Young to Edo. Intercepted or incomplete? It's an incomplete pass. Marcus Merrick had a hand on the football. He intercepted three passes this year, including a big one in the Michigan game, and he almost got one here. What they do, they really put Pettis out wide to try and draw the linebacker out of it, but Merrick just does an exceptional job getting over here, as does Gale. Interesting concept that BYU has, though. Merrick against Michigan had 21 tackles and an interception. He intercepted a pass in the Michigan game every year of his career. <laughs> He's something. Brigham Young. Young on the keep at third in the yard, and he did not get it. Mark Hoshevar on the stop for Ohio State. And Adam well, Young is going to have to give it up. Fourth down. Young was a wishbone quarterback in high school, and he rolled out, and that's been a pretty good play for him, but it didn't work this time. Young has stymied a little bit. He's only hit two of his last seven passes in this case. Look at the defensive effort by Hoshevar. Yeah, look at Merrick right there again, and here comes Cobb, the other linebacker up. Say a Marcus Merrick must have been born with a football <laughs> at his nose because his nose is on the football all night long when he plays the game. There's Garcia Lane, the deep man. Mike Knees, the punter for Brigham Young, a lot of time gets it away and really hits it well. Lane backpedaling that kick is hit. He takes it back at the 15 yard line and he may have outkicked his coverage wide at the 30 and down he goes and a flag down there may have been clipping in san diego fred white irv brown 9 to 38 left in the first half ohio state leading brigham young 17 to 7. that's john frank the tight end from ohio state he's got an ice pack on that leg and uh, apparently he's uh, turned an ankle over frank the good tight end who has well, really come along and what a bright young man a 3.92 great average upcoming tomorrow the california bowl fresno state bowling green you can see it on ESPN, Kevin Slayton will be there along with Bud Wilkinson. Auburn and Boston College in the Tangerine Bowl tomorrow night. Sam Rosen and Paul McGuire, that one's on ESPN. Part of the outstanding football coverage and bowl coverage on ESPN this year. Buckeyes on offense. First down at the 10. Von Brodnax, the fullback, straight ahead. Got yardage. He's down around the 15-yard line. A little bit of the history of this bowler. This is a fifth year fourth. The most lopsided game was the first one when Navy beat Brigham Young 23-16. In 79, Indiana beat Brigham Young 38-37. In 80, Brigham Young came from 20 points back in the last four minutes plus, beat SMU 46-45. Last year, Brigham Young beat Washington State 38-36. And we've got another one going here tonight as Tom Zach runs the football up near the 20-yard line, knocked down shy of the first down. Greg Peterson made the hit. Boy, he was really looking to uh, tear Tom Zach's head off and uh, doing a very intelligent thing. Tom Zach goes down underneath Peterson because Peterson was going to make a tackle the way you toss. You put your face in the numbers, you keep your head up, and just drill somebody. That's how the ball is popped loose. Third down, very short. Let's see if they go to the battering ram, Broadnax. Williams goes wide left. Anderson wide right. Dwelly is the tight end. Broadnax, the fullback. Spencer, the tailback in the eye. Put Anderson in motion. Rod next, the 252 pound fullback, battling for the yard. He may have put the football on the ground there, but he picked it up again in a hurry. Brandon Flint made the stop, but Rod next gets the first down for Ohio State. Leon White, a linebacker, there to help Brandon Flint on the tackle. 
very early on it's been the uh the superior running game of ohio state they have 103 yards going against the throwing game of byu and of course what'll be interesting we mentioned early does byu have to use more than six people to stop that running game if they do earl bruce will throw the football and they'll play action as well as anybody when they do it Tomzak wanting to throw looking deep downfield anderson and it is broken up incomplete Good pass coverage that time. John Mannion was there for Brigham Young and thought he should have intercepted. Tom Holmo was there also. Mannion got the hand on the football. Mannion's an interesting guy. We take another look. It is it's just a post pattern. Mannion had a couple of interceptions this year. He's a good athlete. 6'2", 199-pound senior. He was an all-state quarterback. His brother, Pace Mannion, is the point guard for Jerry Pimm's Utah Redskins. So uh, one went to BYU, one went to Utah, both competing for their schools and starting. Eight minutes, three seconds left in the first half. This time, Tom Zach splits his running backs. Ken Spencer chased out of bounds about the line of scrimmage by Todd Schell, the linebacker. Brandon Flint really did an exceptional job that time in forcing uh, Spencer to change his angle, and that let the pursuit catch up. Ohio State uh, was funny. Uh, the athletic director, Glenn Tuckett, was kidding some of the people about the bowl here. He says, you're at the uh, Hertz Bowl here. The Avis Bowl is up the road. Of course, talking about the Rose Bowl, where Ohio State uh, would like to go every year because that means you win the Big Ten. Michigan will represent the Big Ten this year. That Jemison wide right. Anderson and Williams left. Tomzak takes the handoff to Spencer, fires the ball, complete to Jemison. Knocked down across the 35 by Greg Peterson. Jemison. Out of Lincoln Heights, Ohio, 190-pound junior had nine catches for 233 yards this year. Man defense, and Peterson has got to stay with Jemison on a crossing pattern. That's virtually impossible. You can get a look. Jemison makes a catch. Boy, Tomzak drills it. This is the guy who had to wait his turn until Schleister left, but a lot of grief during that three-game losing streak, and Earl Bruce just sat him down to take the grief off of him. All he does is wind up the Big Ten passing efficiency leader. Split the wide receivers. Wally's the tight end. The back's in the eye. Spencer got a little working room. And he's across the 40-yard line with the football. The 41, Brandon Flint, the defensive tackle, made the initial stop for Brigham Young. Went with the option that time and has run to the short side of the field. A little fake to uh, Broaden actually bellied it a bit. Spencer got decent yardage. Flint is uh, 6'3", a 241-pound junior. Played a little basketball and baseball in high school, so even though he's got that great size, he's an athlete. Jimmy Gale in the game at tailback now. There's your score, second quarter, seven minutes left in the first half. Jimmy Gale. How about that for a backup tailback? He's got the first down. Mike O'Neill, the linebacker, made the tackle. Not a bad backup. I saw him last year in uh, Palo Alto in the Stanford game. He knows when to cut. He does combine some uh, speed and power. Another look. Watch Broadnax lead. Boy, this is a load. He'll take you on. They pull Lukens. He's been doing it for four years. Lukens is looking for somebody to drill, and he just finds number 27, John Mannion, and puts a hole in him. What if you're a linebacker in a stunt, and you look up, and here comes Broadnax? <laughs> oh, no, it's him. I'd pass. <laughs> <laughs> 252 pounds with a fullback bearing down him. Tomzak going to the short man. That's incomplete. Tended for Jimmy Gale, broken up by Leon White. And he had a man deep who may have been working himself open but didn't go long enough. They really rolled the corners up White. to the line of scrimmage that time and got good underneath coverage. White has been very effective in this ballgame. Didn't start, but he's done a lot of good things. So we've got a second and ten. That's the kind of play. Look at Earl Bruce's reaction. He wasn't too happy with that because that's the one that winds up in the other end zone. There's Leon White, the man that made the play. 48 and a half yard line, Ohio State. Looking at second down 10. Then Spencer didn't get much. He's inside the 50 of about the 48 yard line. Brandon Clinton again, Leon White. Jim Spencer, the ball carrier. White really has been very Leon impressive. Uh, let's take a look at how the linebackers flow. Of course, the key is those BYU linemen keep the guards off, and the guards will take you to the football. And there's White taking on the big uh, tackle, or the big guard in this case, Lukens, and then going over and making the play. Leon White's home, his hometown right here, San Diego. Buckeyes have it third and six at the 48-yard line of Brigham Young. Split the wide receivers. Tomzak wanting to throw, firing for Williams, incomplete. 
broken up at the 30-yard line. Good pass coverage that time by the Brigham Young secondary, Tom Homo. Homo got a hand on it. They had a stunt on with White, who we've been talking about, a freshman, and Marv Allen. Allen did a very good job Homo. that time. Here's a look at Earl Bruce. Craig Peterson, the deep man for Brigham Young. Carl Edwards on to kick for Ohio State with 5.48 left in the first half. The Buckeyes leading Brigham Young 17-7. Brigham Young has slowed down Ohio State's momentum now. The Buckeyes really had to go. Look at that punt. Talk about hanging one high. It's going to be a call, fair catch call for them. They let it go in the end zone. Brigham Young with the football at their own 20-yard line. The Cougars down by 10 points. Raymond Hamilton gets the call and cuts it up to about the 24-yard line. Garcia Lane, the cornerback, made the tackle for Ohio State. Good football game going here. Tell you what Earl Bruce did, too, early in the year when they went through that three-game losing streak. They really simplified the defense to let Cobb and Merrick roam. The line will keep the guards off of you, and uh, Merrick and Cobb are going to find you. It's that simple. Second down five. Steve Young going to dump it to Wayman Hamilton out of the backfield. He's trying to find working room, and there just isn't much there. He is across the 25, knocked down shy of the first down. It'll be third down for Brigham Young, and a couple as Marcus Merrick was there again on the tackle. Well, that is excellent pursuit. Ohio State can play some defense. You know, the Big Ten has changed so much now, Fred. Uh, I believe that people like Mike White at Illinois and Joe Salem in Minnesota, they're starting to throw the football, and now you've got a defense, uh, the passing game so much more, and Ohio State has adjusted tremendously. Brigham Young looking at third and three with four minutes, 22 seconds left in the first half. First down, Eddie Stinnett made the catch out of the backfield. To a play action that time, and there was excellent uh, pressure for Ohio State. As they really got some folks in uh, in Young's face quickly, but he was able to complete the pass. Number 37, Orlando Lari. Let's take another look. A little play action, 33. They expect Hamilton to be a blocker, and here's Lari in his face. Get the chores done here, and BYU keeps the drive alive. Garcia Lane put the lick on him that time. First and 10, Brigham Young. At their own 35-yard line. Young firing complete. Kirk Pendleton made the grab inside the 50 at the 46-yard line. First down, Brigham Young. The safety, Kelvin Bell, made the stop, and there's Pendleton coming off the field after the reception. Well, you talk about throwing in between the linebacker and the safety. This is excellent. They find the seam. They do this so well. Excellent catch. Young, 15 of 22, now has 207 yards, and we still got uh, four minutes left in the second period. And the Cougars of Brigham Young down by 10 points. Starting to mount a threat here at the 46-yard line of Ohio State. Collie and Ballholm, the wide receivers. Young rolling out of the pocket. Good protection is going to put it up toward the end zone. He's got Hudson, and he drops the ball. Oh, you can look at the Brigham Young bench. Look at Gordon Hudson's reaction. The Cougar bench had already started jumping up and down. They were sure they had six on the board. Who else could you want down there open right then? He's made so many great catches. This time he's wide open, and one of those things that happened, these things are not rehearsed. I think he felt like he was uh, going over the end line, end line because he stopped, and I think he felt that instead of uh, going to score a touchdown, Fred, he'd be over the back line 10 yards away. Or maybe the out-of-bounds strike. Or out-of-bounds, it would be correct. The story on Young. Well... The Cougars just missed six points. They're still down 17 to seven. Now they have second and 10. Pendleton and Edo this time, the wide receivers. They fire it. It is complete. Mike Edo took a lick but made the catch. Kelvin Bell put a shot on Edo just as he caught the ball. What a job by the junior from San Clemente, California. 
that's not easy to catch that pass there. You know you're going to get the headgear in the back, and Bell is a very physical player anyway. He started as a fr uh, freshman, that is. He's always around the football. So the Cougars, after the uh, apparent touchdown miss, come right back, and they uh, pick up that first down. Ball home, and Colley wide to the right side. Gordon Hudson, the tight end, first and 10, Brigham Young. And I wonder if they'll ice Steve Young's arm at halftime. Boy, he came out <laughs> and Hudson dropped the ball. But they suddenly got back up on that great catch. Collie and Ballholm wide to the right side. Hudson, the tight end, lined up left. Back goes Young. Wants to throw it. Looking for Ballholm. It is broken up beautifully on the five-yard line. Doug Hill, the rover. And I'll tell you what. A little conversation right there between ball home and the defense. Steve Young really laid the ball in there pretty good, and it was just a good defensive play by Hill. Look at the uh, BYU lineman do a job holding out and giving some time to Young. That is an excellent play by the defense. Number 27, Doug Hill, runs the 40 and 4-7. He's a weightlifter, and he's also a hitter. He led the team in fumble recovery. Good play by Hill, a junior out of Miami, Florida, Jackson High School. Make it second and ten, Brigham Young at the Ohio State 27. Oh my goodness, look at this. Who has the football? Shades of Mike Pyle used to play for the Chicago Bears. The host decided to snap it. Well, again, third and ten. Young. Under Heat's going to get away from the man. Still on his feet at the 40. Throws. Complete a tremendous catch by... And they spin it out of the backfield. They're shy of the first down. Garcia Lane made the tackle. And Stinna made a good catch because he was wearing Garcia Lane when he made it. You talk about Houdini. How did he get out of this one? And the one problem, and Lavelle Edwards is going to uh, mention this at halftime because this guy is down. But Scott Colley had a touchdown. He didn't react. He thought his teammate was down too. Young keeps it going, though, with just an excellent effort. Look at this as Foster makes the hit. Apparently he's down. If that's the throw, he is down. Jerome Foster, who's been a tremendous pass rusher for Ohio State all year. Now look at the catch, and he's just wearing Garcia Lane. 17 to 7. Again, you're watching the Holiday Bowl in San Diego on ESPN right now. One of a lot of bowl games you're going to be watching. Good series coming up, Irv. The Soviet hockey team is coming over again, and ESPN is going to at the 29, a 39-yard attempt. Brigham Young down by 10 points, trying to pick up three of them right here with Gunther. A minute 47 left in the first half. Gunther has the kick long enough, and it's good. With a minute 43 left in the half, Gunther picks up three for Brigham Young. And the Cougars closed within seven points. It's now with a minute 43 left in the half. Ohio State 17 and Brigham Young 10. Irv, one of the reasons people don't know maybe so much about Brigham Young. They've been a good football team for years. They've won seven straight WAC championships, but they play out in that mountain area, and they just don't get the national recognition that a lot of teams do. But I'll tell you what, for the last several years, Brigham Young can do what they're doing here tonight. Step on the field and play with them. Along with Kelvin Lindsay. Gunther put a foot to it, and Spencer's going to pick it off at the four-yard line, bring it straight up the middle, and he's going to be knocked down across the 20 at the 23, and the Buckeyes will have it first and 10 with a minute 36 left in the first half. Seventeen ten, Ohio State. Buckeye defense has done a pretty good job. They've they've given up some yardage to the BYU passing game, but not that many points. Of course, a big disappointment on the Cougar sideline settling for three as uh, Hudson had an apparent touchdown. I got to believe he'll do some more stuff. Rod Nax with the football, the 252 pound junior from Xenia, Ohio. Once he gets a little, <laughs> gets a little running room, he is just tough to stop. The gain on the play was six at second and four Buckeyes. He is tough to stop. He's a little bowling ball. We got a look a minute ago at Fred Zeckman, the quarterback coach. He's going to New Mexico State as their head coach. Don Zach, the tailback, and not much there for him that time. No, Von Brodnax again. David Opu, the linebacker, on the tackle for Brigham Young. The clock running, one minute left in the half. And Ohio State, 
with a 17 to 10 lead over Brigham Young in the football, but still a half to go here at the Holiday Bowl. I tell you what, the way this game has gone in the last four years, don't go running away. <laughs> For sure, because Cedric Anderson kind of turned things around with that block punt that let uh, uh, the quarterback Tom Zach take it in. Then BYU came right back. A lot of football to be played here. This time it's Tim Spencer. Bit of a hole. He has the first down. Stopped by Kevin Walker out of the secondary for Brigham Young that time. What a block by Zelensky, uh, the big guard, 6'4", 248. Misdirection. Watch Zelensky as he just doubles down and crushes the uh, middle guard. Ian Spencer now has 103 yards and 11 carries. Every time he gets his hands on the football, you just get the feeling he'd go all the way. Ohio State with the first fellows will not be involved in it unless they are. <laughs> uh, is this like the Stanford this band? I don't know. I, did I say that? I don't believe I said that. <laughs> oh, look at Tom Zach step away from the rush. He's going to get hit from behind. It's going to, is that a forward pass? It is. It's incomplete. Ryan Hansen went by him going one way and came back and nailed it. Fortunately for Ohio State, it is ruled an incomplete pass because BYU would have had the football with 23 seconds. We'll take another look. They do a lot of things, but Tom Zach does an exceptional job, and then he really gets some pressure from behind by Brian Hansen. It is ruled an incomplete uh, let me, pass. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you saw a pass rush from behind? <laughs> <laughs> Brian Hansen misses him going one direction and then came back and got him. Brian was on a mission in Atlanta a year ago. He's just a good football player. Spencer. Dances across the 40, up shy of the 45, and shy of the first down. It'll be third down for Ohio State. Mike Morgan, the defensive tackle, on the stop for Brigham Young. And a timeout called here by Ohio State. Shoe. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Lou the Togros are one of the early favorites of the Cleveland Browns. Gales the tailback in the eye. Anderson wide left. Williams now goes in motion to the left side. It's third down five. Tom Zach on the keep. Shy of the first down with seven seconds left in the half. Mike O'Neill, the linebacker, made the tackle, and that's going to do it for first half action here at the Holiday Bowl, Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California. We have had a good first half of action. And Ohio State's Buckeyes out of the Big Ten are going to go in with the lead. We're at halftime. Ohio State 17, Brigham Young 10. ESPN, the network that brings you the most exciting sports on television, can now take you to the most exciting sports events in America with our watch and win sweepstakes of champions. What do you win, Jim? A trip for two to either the Indy 500, World Series, Super Bowl 17, Kentucky Derby, or the U.S. Open Tennis Finals. Winner's choice. Plus, there's more? A Pontiac Trans Am. Wow. And there are more Trans Ams. Hitachi Color TVs, Timex watches, and sports posters. Over 600 prizes in all. How do you play? There are four contests. For each contest, we'll give you a contest number and two code words on ESPN every evening between 7 and 8.30 Eastern Time and on every sports center. Send the contest number, both code words, and your name and address to this address, and you're in. Every two weeks through November and December, there's a new contest, two new code words, and new chances to win. And all valid entries in every contest are eligible for the grand prize. We want in, Jim. ESPN employees aren't eligible. Oh. Here's a brilliant solution to any tool chest. It's Bendelite Visual Tool. Its 10-inch long flexible shaft with high-intensity light is perfect for getting into those hard-to-reach places in your home, car, or shop. And Bendelite comes with some very practical accessories. You get the high-intensity... Steve Young. Watch the catch here by Neil Bauholm. Diving grab. Oh, a beauty. But the Buckeye defense was equal to the task. Watch Ohio State linebacker Roland Tatum. He'll sack Young right here, and BYU comes up empty-handed in its first series. Buckeyes made good in their first chance to put points on the board. Freshman Rich Spangler, 48 yards away. It's good. His longest effort of the year, 3-0 OSU. Last play, first quarter, Young to the air. Gordon Hudson, one-handed grab. What an effort. Same drive now, BYU third and goal. Young finds Bauholm in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Cougars lead 7-3, but the Buckeyes come right back. Tim Spencer gets it in motion, finds a little daylight. Watch out, he's got great speed, and there he goes, 61 yards to Pater. Ohio State leads 10-7 second quarter. 
turnaround play came right here. BYU's Mike Meese, punt formation. But OSU's Cedric Matt Henderson gets a hand on it. Buckeyes tape over deep in Cougar territory. Then Mike Tomzak fakes the handoff. Bootleg touchdown, 17-7 Buckeyes. Late second quarter, Young scrambles free of the rush. Hits Eddie Stennett. Watch this. Great protection there and good scrambling on the part of Young. And that uh, reception by Stennett sets up a 39-yard field goal by Kurt Gunther to complete the scoring in the first half. And that's how we stand at intermission. 17-10, Ohio State leading Brigham Young. Of course, the uh, Buckeyes appearing in their 11th consecutive postseason uh, a bowl game and BYU appearing for the seventh time five in a row in the Holiday Bowl as a matter of fact the Cougars have been a part of each Holiday Bowl since its inception in 1978. We have some more to talk about and pretty we'll much even in first downs but look at the rushing difference BYU minus 15 Ohio State 145 you expect the Cougars to have the advantage in the air with 231 yards on the, uh, on the part of uh, their talented uh, quarterback Steve Young. Total yards, fairly close. Penalties have not really been too significant up to this point of the contest. So thus far, it has been a fairly evenly uh, first half, but the rushing game has been dominated by o Ohio State, particularly the run by Spencer. The passing, well, of course, uh, the edge uh, going to BYU because of the fine quarterback, Young, who follows uh, in succession as some other talented athletes that they have had who can really put the ball in the air. We're talking about the likes of uh, Mark Wilson, uh, Jim McMahon, uh, Gifford Nielsen. You go back to Virgil Carter. This BYU team has been in seven bowl games since 1974. They have been a strong team to reckon with out of the Western Athletic Conference and Ohio State. Certainly a big win over Michigan finished this year. We're getting ready to go back to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Let's rejoin the Holiday Bowl, Fred White and Irv Brown. You're looking at the conclusion of a tremendous halftime show here at the Holiday Bowl. Jack Murphy Stadium, San Diego, Fred White along with Irv Brown. And Irv, a word about the Holiday Bowl. We talked about how great the games have been and just this is just the fifth Holiday Bowl. But the people here in San Diego can be very proud. They do a tremendous job with this football game. Well, they really do. Of course, they're going wild now because they're exploding. Uh, firecrackers are popping. <laughs> it's a heck of a show. We got a good football game going. 17-10 at halftime. Ohio Lights State. finally go on. <laughs> now, we've got a second half of football coming up that <laughs> is going to be pretty lively. And that guy right there, 95, 95 Hudson, will have something to say about it. He's got four catches for 53 yards. He dropped uh, one, and we'll quit dwelling on that because those are not rehearsed. As we pointed out, it looked like he either thought he was going out of bounds or he's going over the end line and just seemed to uh, get confused, not able to grasp the situation. But he's been so good all year long. BYU Brigham Young minus 15 rushing. They just don't even attempt to rush the ball. We're going to start this second half in semi-darkness. They turned the lights out for the halftime show, and those lights have not come back up as yet. Watch out for that counter crisscross in the bootleg there. <laughs> Tim Spencer and Jimmy Gale deep at the goal line. Two pretty good people to return the football here for Ohio State as Brigham Young getting set to kick. There are the lights, they're just not all back on you. Another point, you know, you mentioned Spencer and Gale at the goal line. Earl Bruce isn't afraid to use his hosses in uh, special team situations. He puts them in there and if they get hurt, that's just too bad. Boy, I like that, that he makes them compete. And that's a couple of uh, pretty good folks back there right now. The official has stepped up to the football and he's not gonna let them kick off yet. They're gonna try to get the lights back Their up. Their scheme and everything. They play man under, and they'll zone that back, and they really make it difficult. We've seen some great catches by BYU, and then that headgear sticks them in the back, and you've got to be a man to catch the football. I'm really impressed with the athletic ability of Ohio State, and I don't think you could find a better match. I don't know how this thing's going to wind up. We mentioned before the game we thought it would be a 35-34 go. I don't see any reason to, to, to back off on that. Fred White, Irv Brown. San Diego, the Holiday Bowl, Jack Murphy Stadium, the second half underway, 17 to 10. Ohio State leading Brigham Young as Tim Spencer takes the kick a yard deep in the end zone for the Buckeyes, and he is knocked down at the 12-yard line. Bobby Salazar got down for Brigham Young and made the play. There you see him, number 25, celebrating. The light's not on fully yet, but they have decided to go ahead and get the second half started. And Ohio State will have the ball in a seven-point lead, but Bobby Salazar made a pretty good play for Brigham. He really did. It'll be interesting to see, Fred, if they try to go with some deception. There's so many things that go through a football coach's mind 
I remember Bo Schembecker always had his linemen, offensive linemen, wear gloves the same color as the defensive lineman's uh, shirt. Let's see what they do here now. Broadnax and Spencer in the eye. Williams and Anderson, the wide receivers. Tom Zack, the Buckeye quarterback. Hands off, Tim Spencer. Been a pretty good shot all night long. Why change it? And he has first down yardage. Tim Spencer, who had a 61-yard touchdown run in the first half, knocked down by Greg Peterson, but the first play for Ohio State, predictably enough, Spencer, and he got the yardage. He followed Big Carson's block. He's 6'5", 270, as you see. There's two arm tackles, and you're not going to arm tackle this guy. One of the guys who arm tackles is John Mannion right there as he is unable to bring Spencer down. I'm going to tell you something. I've seen a lot of uh, good backs. I'm not so sure there's that many better in America than this guy. He's not getting the pub he deserves. Well, we mentioned he has the ball again and has a little working room outside. He's over 120 yards in this ball game. Greg Peterson again chased him out of bounds. Mentioned again, Tim Spencer, the last six games of the year for Ohio State, averaged 158 yards, six and two-tenths yards a carry. And there's a story on him, Fred. And, uh, we were talking at halftime. Don't you think that the pro scouts just up that thing a notch? Tim Spencer hadn't hurt himself here a bit tonight. Just mentioned when he went to the 61-yard touchdown run, somebody probably a scout walked to a board and just moved his name up a few notches. Jimmy Gale's the tailback now. Broadnax, the fullback, gets the call. Calls it straight ahead for short yardage. Chuck Ian, the nose guard, and Brian Hansen, a linebacker on the tackle for Brigham Young. Ian did a great job because uh, they were trying to trap in this situation. Number 64 for Ohio State pulls out, tries to execute the trap block. And, uh, we're talking about uh, Jimmy Lakeley. The offensive guard has given Lukens a throw up low and uh, nothing doing. BYU, good defense. Buckeyes, third and one, their own 33-yard line. Anderson Williams wide left. Jimmy Gale, he's got the hole in the first down across the 40 and drags the man to the 45-yard line. Jimmy Gale working for Tim Spencer, knocked down by John Mannion. They don't lose much when they put him in the game. Well, that is a good back. Uh, as you mentioned, they don't lose the thing. Here's a guy who can combine that speed and power, as we've talked about. He dips that shoulder in and out, gives you all the moves. He's able to break the tackle right there until uh, Mannion is able to get the job done. But 35, Mike O'Neill is a pretty sure tackler. Just doesn't get it done in that case. Gale's a 190-pound senior out of Hampton, Virginia. Again, he's the tailback in the eye, and again, he's got the call. Flag goes down as he gets knocked backward. He was across the 45 at the 47. First down. Tell you what, you would know he's from the Southwest Conference when you listen to him if you didn't know it beforehand. <laughs> Jumping Joe Thomas out of uh, Wilburton, Oklahoma. High <laughs> formation, Ohio State. Good fake from Tom Zach to Kale, and he's going to go up the middle. Complete. Jimmy Williams. Tom Zach with a good fake to Gale that time on the play action. Excellent fake. And boy, you talk about a throw and a catch. Mannion was right there for the interception. Watch Mannion, 27. He's coming in, but the ball was thrown perfectly on the left side. And Williams just makes a superb catch for 22 yards. Gary Williams, you're going to see it again from a different angle. Outstanding receiver for Ohio State. I haven't talked much about him. Boy, Tom Zach was a magician that time with the football. Williams is 6'2", 212, and he can catch it. Again, they go to the tailback. Around to the 36-yard line and knocked down by Mike O'Neill. Jimmy Gale doing heavy work out of the backfield now for Ohio State, and now Tim Spencer comes back on. Earl Bruce has really changed a lot of ideas since his days at Iowa State. They used to run sprint draw oh, every third play. Now they give you a lot of looks. It's really hard to, uh, to key on what they're doing, and you're not going to... Uh, do a very good job now that just defense in one thing with Earl Spencer back in the game they fake to him Tom Zach's gonna roll out of the pocket 35 30 dives ahead to the 25 and has the first down for Ohio State Tom Homo came up to try to close him down and Tom Zach with a good job of running the football for Ohio State Brandon Flint lost his lane and this is what happens when you lose the lane here they come they got a little stunt going on and Flint that's shell Flint lost his lane and Tom Zach, who played for his father in high school, just does an excellent job. He's a leader down the road. I think people will really see what kind of a leader he is. He's very active in the FCA. He's quick. He's multi-talented. And you've got a good example of it right there. Well, I told you all you needed to know about him when he got lost his starting job for one game, came back the next game, and took Ohio State down the stretch to six wins. Mike O'Neill. 
Linebacker John Mannion, defensive back on the stop that time for Brigham Young. Take another look once again as they're running behind Roberts and Zelensky. They do a good job here, walling things off. There's the lead block. Ohio State really on the move. They've got second and about six. BYU trying to dig in. Notice both coaches have put on a jacket. It's cooled off a bit here. Well, it has. It's been getting down in the 30s and 40s in the evenings in San Diego. Daytime temperatures up around 70. It was 55 at game time, but dropping now. Tom Zach has him in the eye. Pitch out. That's their whistles blowing, and the play blown dead. Jimmy Gale replaces Tim Spencer at the tailback. Spencer's been in and out of the game quite a bit here in the second half. I don't know if he's got a problem of some kind or if Oh, Bruce just likes what he's seeing from Jimmy Gale right now and wants to give Spencer a good rest. Tom Zach's going to fire it out on the far side to Williams. He's got the completion, and he's out of bounds. What a receiver. Gary Williams, a 212-pound senior from Wilmington, Ohio. 33 catches this year for 627 yards. He now has 48 straight games, counting bowl games in which he's caught a pass. 16 career touchdowns. Well, you talk about a quick route, though. This guy runs out of a slot formation. And they cleared out with uh, Anderson and Gary Williams. There's a story on him. He's exceptional. Gary Williams uh, was a defensive back, and then he changed up. They're inside the 10-yard line now. Tim Spencer with the football. Brandon Flint on the stop. Williams has four catches in the game, 56 yards. His biggest day this year, five catches against Florida State. Last year, he caught 13 balls in one game against Florida State. There's it is. Here's another look. Once again, the simple lead play. Spencer showing that power and that good cutting ability. You've got to remember, this guy is 6'1", 212 pounds. You don't lead the Big Ten unless you're really quality. There's just too many good backs there. They take out Williams, the wide receiver. Go to the power formation. There's Spencer inside the five. Knocked down shy of the first down. It'll be third down, Ohio State. Tom Homo on the stop for Brigham Young. See him getting up off the ground and Spencer getting up right behind him. That man has done a lot of work already tonight. Really has. Well, we got a war going on up front, Fred, between the nose guard, Chuck Ian, and Craig Pack, the center for Ohio State. I saw Pack a film against Wisconsin's Tim uh, Crummery, maybe one of the best in the nation. He held him to two tackles. Pack has done an exceptional job. He was the second-team linebacker who made the move very successfully. Big play coming. Spencer, the tailback. Rodnax, the fullback in the eye. Put a man in motion. Rodnax gets the call. Power straight ahead. Knocked down shy of the goal line. Very close to first down yardage. And they're going to unpile. The officials are stopping the clock here as you look at Earl Bruce trying to decide what play to get in. I don't know if he really knows what he has just yet. Well, there he has the best coaching record in the Big Ten in the last four years, 28 and four. What a he's got a done. big decision here, Fred. If they don't make the first down, do you take the cinch field goal and give your ball club the 10-point lead, or do you try and power with Broadnax? Let's see if he doesn't have to make a decision, and they get it. It's going to be close. They haven't stretched him yet. Both sides looking on, and they are just about six inches shy of the first down. Well, you know what the fans say. They always say the same thing, go, go. But what do you do? Do you take a, do you take a chippy here, or do you go for it? Apparently, they're going to go for it. There it is. That's the distance they have. Well, the fans don't get fired. They can buy a ticket new next week and go to the game again. That's right. The fans don't have a sloppy exchange between the center and the quarterback, and uh, maybe somebody jump offside or something. This is interesting. This is where you love to see it. Fourth, six inches for the first down, two yards for the touchdown. The call is a quarterback sneak because it takes the middle backer out of there, but when you got a guy like Broadnax, you're tempted to give it to him. He's the back on the right side, Spencer on the left side. He's put some Tomzak on the sneak. He has the first down, and he's close to the goal line. First down, Ohio State, first and goal with 9-19 left in the third quarter. Guys leading Brigham Young 17 to 10, and here it is. Here's the surge be be behind, I should say, Pack and Lucan, and Tom Zach picks it up. So they're in great shape now. They'll uh, have four cracks at the goal line, and with a guy like Broadnax, another guy like Spencer, and that good offensive line, they're in great shape, uh, as we mentioned. First and goal at the one for Ohio State. Tom Zach looking toward the bench, seeing what play they want. Rodnax, the fullback, Spencer, the tailback in the eye. Tom Zach, under the center. It's Rodnax, the big fullback, over the top. Touchdown, Ohio State. And a flag down on the play. Hold it. 
There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Rodnack up over the top, the lineman, the lineman that is, down underneath Submarine, and you try and stack him up with Apu up front, and uh, Rodnack is so big and he's so strong. 252 pounds, and he just went up and over the top. They really experimented with him a bunch and during the spring at middle guard. They played him some at middle guard this year and then put him back there to block for Spencer. And, of course, Spencer's had a great year, and I think Rodnack's a big part of it. Spangler drills it, 8.57 left in the third quarter. Our score, Ohio State 24, Brigham Young 10. There's a story on the scoring drive. That's a good drive. That's a solid drive. Well, after they got the holding penalty on Lukens, they fought back and just got it done. I thought the key play was the toss to Williams. Well, you can chew six minutes off that clock and come away with seven points. You've got to come off the field feeling pretty good about it, Irv. That's right. Later tonight on SportsCenter, Sal Marchano and Lou Palmer have all the basketball scores for you. Sixers and Knicks highlights and an NFL preview. Got a flag down. They're going to take the touchback, and there's a flag down up around the 37-yard line. Looks like offside BYU. Let's see if uh, that's the, the, the call. Receiving team offside on a kickoff. Must have left that zone. And that's what we have. And I. That is the call. You don't see that very often. No, you don't. Ohio State gathered around the official saying, what have we got here? Hey, what they could do. I'm not sure old Bruce uh, would choose to do this now. You decline it. That's a good time to onside. They'll, they'll uh, I mean, if. They'll take, uh, take the ball right there. 8.57 left in the third quarter. Ohio State 24, Brigham Young 10. The Ohio State's defense has given up some passing yardage, but the Buckeyes have done a great job of keeping BYU out of the end zone so far. Pendleton and Edo are the wide receivers. Steve Young sets the Cougar offense down, puts Hudson, the tight end, in motion. Young. Intercepted by Garcia Lane. At the 25-yard line, Lane came up with the interception. His first interception of the year, believe it or not. What a player he is, a 174-pound junior from Youngstown, Ohio, South High School. He had broken up nine passes this year, but that's his first interception. It went three deep zone. Kelvin Bell gave him some help, and you knew that that was going to happen pretty soon because Young has been fortunate. He's thrown into a crowd three times. This time, Lane is in the right place at the right time. He's very quick. He's very competitive. And Ohio State in great shape now to uh, go a long way toward uh, really putting this one away. Her first turnover of the ball game. Spencer gets the call. Knocked down at the 25-yard line at the line of scrimmage. That pass a while ago intended for Gordon Hudson. David Apu, the linebacker on the tackle. You look at Earl Bruce. Earl, you just mentioned his ball club now up by 14 points. And a chance to put a dent in Brigham Young. But don't forget the firepower Brigham Young has. They can come back because you see an injured player. Limping Walker. off the field is Kevin Walker, the strong safety. Put Anderson wide right, Williams in the slot, Dwelly the tight end left in the eye formation. Tom Zach throwing on the far side for Williams. He slips down after making the catch at the 18-yard line short of the first down. Tom Holmo was over there. Same play on the key drive, and Eric Williams down, He's and hurt. hopefully it's not, it's not the knee, and it's a cramp. We'll take a look and see what they're doing. Boy, they run that play as well as anybody in the country. They cleared out. Williams makes a sharp cut. Can't really see if they're working on the knee. That's his fifth catch of the game, matching his biggest game of the year. He grabbed the back of his leg. Well, and we're talking hamstring, unless it's a cramp. If they force that other muscle up and uh, push on the toe, then it's, uh, it's a cramp. If not, we're talking hamstring. Gonzalez replaced Kevin Walker at the strong safety for Brigham Young and Thad Jemison in place of Gary Williams split in for Ohio State. Williams went out limping. It didn't look very good. Already John Frank is out of the action. The tight end has a knee sprain, so a couple of the starters not playing. Jemison comes wide to the left side, put Anderson in motion. Tom Zach with a handoff to Tim Spencer trying to get outside. Hit by one man, steps away, touchdown, Ohio State. Tim Spencer with an outstanding night here in the Holiday Bowl. His second touchdown of the game. And once he got it outside, he just did it himself, Er. He really did. And I'll tell you, the guy who got him outside is the fullback, Broadnax. You talk about burying somebody. That's exactly what happens is they just run the power play. Here is the look. Now watch Broadnax just go up and just take on the backer and crush him. 
And then Spencer does it himself as he is able to uh, run out of the grass as number 25, Bobby Salazar, just in the ball game. Spencer well, now has 18 carries, 152 yards. And two touchdowns. A 61-yard touchdown run in the first half that just electrified the crowd here. Spangler hits the extra point. And timeout taken here with 7.58 left in the third quarter. It's now Ohio State 31, Brigham Young 10. Eight seconds left in the third quarter, and here's a stat that'll kind of blow your doors off. Brigham Young has had the ball for eight seconds in this half. Well, that's really something. Of course, Spencer's taken over. He's got 150-some yards. If you're interested, the record here, Craig James out of SMU, 225 in 1980. James and Dickerson, the one-two punch. Spencer, the way he's packing it, uh, I'm sure will come very, very close. Williams has a mild knee sprain, could return. Here we go. Oh, did he hit the football? Spangler kicks it deep in the end zone. And they're going to run it out after a little hesitation. Tiamalu fumbles, and Ohio State is on the football at the 15-yard line. The Buckeyes come up with a fumble recovery. Mike Lanise that had the football. Well, Ohio State is just wired up. Look at that was a little confused. He thought he was in the end zone. We'll take a step up and watch the left foot or the right foot, whatever. He feels he's out. He has to come out. He runs pretty hard, but he's carrying the ball like a sack of uh, mail there. Gets hit. And now Ohio State has got the football at the 15-yard line. Look out, play action right here. The guys leading 31 to 10. Calls Jimmy Gale the tailback straight ahead inside the 15, down to about the 11-yard line. Ohio State up by 21 points at the moment. And a chance to knock another hole in this football game. Everybody will remember the uh, tremendous comeback that BYU had against SMU. But I got to tell you something. SMU didn't have the defense that we're seeing tonight from Ohio State. It's a very good defensive ball club. Jed grows a tight end left. Jemison in the slot. And the handoff is the Broadnax. Look at the big fullback work. He powers it inside the 10. Down close to the five-yard line where John Mannion pinned him. 252 pounds of fullback right there, folks. What a war up front between Roberts and Flint. Roberts is 6'5", 270, all the tools. Flint, 6'3", 241, giving up 30. And they're just beating on each other. Roberts, just a junior. I have the feeling one day he's just going to blow people away. He's an excellent athlete, very strong and very quick. Third down two, Ohio State. Spencer's the tailback. Pitch out, Spencer. Plenty of people up on the corner and they drive him out of bounds at the five yard line. Brigham Young played it well that time and there's Spencer on the ground and in some pain. Here's the call, holding against Ohio State. They went to this ball game. Well, let's see what Tomzak comes up with. Third and a dozen and a kind of they're down 31 to 10. There's Lavelle Edwards on the other side. Tomzak's gonna put it up. Swings it to Jimmy Gale, the tailback. And he's down at the 20 yard line and Ohio State's going to have to attempt the field goal to get something here. Mike Morgan made the tackle for Brigham Young. There is plenty of time, as you point out, Fred. 6.29 in the third period when you got a cannon like Young. Don't you're in great shape. Store. No, that's very true. Turnovers have really plagued the Cougars in this half. The interception by Gale, the fumble by Tamalia. They've had the football eight seconds, and we uh, have only six minutes remaining in the period. Spangler. Will attempt it. The 37 yard field goal attempt. Has it plenty long and hits it. Spangler nailed it. And a timeout now with six minutes left in the third quarter of action as Spangler puts up three more for Ohio State. The Buckeyes leading Brigham in this third quarter. They're up 34 to 10. Boy, the weather's really changed. Uh, look down, and, and Young is now throwing the football with a jacket on, warming up like a reliever. Here we go. Tiamalo deep in the end zone, no indecision this time. He's just going to touch it down, and Brigham Young will set up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And look at the time of possession in the third quarter of this football game. Irv, it's astounding. Ohio State has had the ball 8 minutes, 40 seconds, 20 plays. Brigham Young just 14 seconds and one play. And you know, Lavelle Edwards isn't very happy about that. Give credit to uh, the defense and the special teamwork of uh, Ohio State. There's Spangler taking a look. 
So BYU has the football at the 20. Steve Young. Just the second play of the third quarter and has a completion at the 30 yard line to Scott Pettis out of the backfield. And he's very close to first down for Brigham Young. We're on the linebacker once again. Fred uh, is Pettis. He ran a little circle route. Kirk Pendleton into the game with a play off the Brigham Young bench as you look at the last play again. Once again, going from split backs most of the evening so they can get their backs into the uh, pass pattern. Pettis comes out, does a good job. This guy will throw the football a little bit, too, if uh, they so desire on the halfback option. Pendleton comes wide right, Edo wide left. Hudson, the tight end, sets up right. Tiamalu straight ahead to the 35-yard line. Casey Tiamalu from San Diego. 5'8", 205-pounder, knocked down by Jerome Foster. It's not a bad war on that side either, Fred. Foster going against Wayne Falafu. They're uh, getting after each other pretty good. ESPN will take you bowling again tomorrow night if you want to go. California Bowl with Kevin Slayton and Bud Wilkinson and the Tangerine with Sam Rosen and Paul McGuire. You're at the Holiday Bowl in San Diego right now, and we're happy to have you along. Brigham Young trying to get back in this thing with 4.55 left in the third quarter. Young's got a man wide open. That's Scott Pettis out of the backfield again, and he's knocked down at the 43. That's a first down for Brigham Young. Garcia Lane, the cornerback, came up to close him out. Linebackers are really getting deep drops, and uh, BYU is going to go with the short underneath routes to their back. The drops are about 12 to 15 yards. That means that uh, underneath is wide open, and they take advantage right here with Pettis. Pendleton and Edo, the wide receivers this time. The Cougars first and 10. Young sets deep, fires. The ball was dropped at the 45. Gordon Hudson had it, and they're going to call it incomplete. Ohio State wanted the completion and the fumble. The official rules the other way. So the line judge, Car Charles Carraway out of Lubbock, Texas, says it's an incomplete pass. Well, I'll tell you what, or if you've talked about it before, they've got them on the whole squad. There you see some of the Buckeyes on the side. They have got some athletes bouncing around in that secondary back there for Ohio State. You think they won't hit you? Here it is, another crossing pattern, one of Lavelle Edwards' favorites. He does like to cross the tight end. I felt he had the football, and he, he did. did. <laughs> Maybe he did. <laughs> They're easy to call up here. Second and ten. Young in trouble, fires incomplete. Intended for Scott Pettis. Boy, I tell you what, he did a great job of scrambling that time as Foster was all over him. And Foster only weighs 258 pounds. Young is a very impressive athlete with upper body strength. Was a wishbone uh, quarterback. Watch the strength here as uh, Foster is a relentless type of a guy. Just runs over the guard, in this case Lloyd Eldred. And somehow Young gets away, almost completes it. Young, a junior out of Greenwich, Connecticut, we mentioned before. He's the great, great, great grandson of the founder of Brigham Young University, one of 5,000 of Brigham's descendants. Has a brother as a freshman quarterback at BYU. Steps up out of trouble. He's going to launch it deep and go for all of it. And Kenneth Ferretto incomplete in the end zone. Think he's got a strong arm? Well, he only threw it 63 <laughs> yards. I'm going to tell you something. It was a flea flicker. It was like somebody threw a dart in a, in a bar. I can't believe that caught. I think he had a little left if they'd have needed it. He just oh, didn't need it. Oh, I want to tell you something. <laughs> Why don't they ever say hi, Pa? Why is it always hi, Ma? Young, uh, the last 20 pass attempts, worth only 80 yards, so things have really slowed down for the lefty. Mike Mays hits the kick. Garcia Lane, flag is down. And Lane is wrapped up shy of the 20-yard line. Now we're going to get the explanation. Only 11 men on the field, including the man that went off. There's no penalty. First down. Well, after all that, there's no penalty. And there's Earl Bruce. Has to be feeling pretty good about things, although a long way to go. 3.56 left in the third quarter. But his club up 34 to 10. Love to talk to Earl Bruce about John McTusick. There's Lavelle Edwards and Joe Thomas talking it over. Earl Bruce uh, court, uh, coached the twos down at Tampa before they dropped the sport. That had to be interesting. Did anybody really coach Matuzak? <laughs> That's what I want to talk to him. You suggested to him, perhaps. 
Straight ahead to the 25 yard line, Brandon Flint. 34 10, Ohio State in front. And the Buckeyes with the football back. And Brigham Young with the players slow getting up. Line of scrimmage really has belonged to Ohio State. Pack and Lukens have blocked extremely well all night long. And of course, Broadnax, I tell you, I'm impressed with him. Well, one thing about Ohio State, they beat Michigan in the last game of the year. But Michigan played one more game in the Big Ten than Ohio State did. They each had one loss. And but for that, the Buckeyes could have been the Big Ten co-champions at least. They just simply did not play enough conference games. Well, and you know, in all honesty, I watched uh, their ball game with Stanford. Looked like they had it, and they end up losing that one. We'll take another look at Broadnax as he bowls over people, just following Pack and Robert. Just does an excellent job. But they lost to Stanford. It seemed to take some heart out of them for a while. They they stumbled against Florida State and then against Wisconsin. But after that, they got right against Illinois, and uh, they go out and get six in a row. The Illinois game is where the turnaround started. This is Jimmy Gale trying to work it out. And he has the first down before Todd Shell, the linebacker, can knock him down for Brigham Young. 244 now left in third quarter action. I think the biggest success story, though, this year for the Buckeyes is uh, Tom Sack turning it around because I don't think he felt very good about himself about that third, fourth game of the year. And now the guy has got nothing but a bright future. You know, when you follow Schleister, it's tough. This kid's doing a good job. Well, he found himself. This is Tim Spencer straight ahead. And he's at the 41-yard line. Good yardage on the play before Marv Allen and Brian Hansen could make the tackle for Brigham Young. And Ohio State's going to look at second down and less than five. Call it three. Their superior depth really has taken over now, Fred. They're wearing BYU down. They're much bigger and stronger up front. The story on Spencer, as I mentioned, 220 yards is a record here held by Craig James. Touchdowns came from 61 and 18 yards out. Flag down. That's Jimmy Gale hit and stopped shy of the 45. And a dozen from their 31 yard line. Tom Zach is going to throw. Fires complete. And the football is at the 36 yard line. Marv Allen made the stop. They may have a face mask. We got a very little cute this well. I like his speed. He's got the quick release. It is not a first down, it's just a five yard penalty. But Tom Zach with the good feet. Watch his back foot as he sets it up. Not quite at 90. Releases quickly. Tom Zach uh, in the third period is five for five and 55 yards. So he's really taking the play away from Steve Young, who was really something in that first half with close to 200 yards in, uh, passing. Well, it's going to be second and four for Ohio State at their own 40 yard line. And Tom Zach looking on the sideline and it's incomplete. Now a flag goes down late again. And Brigham Young upset. He may have pass interference. Oh, has three interceptions this year. Comes up and they call him for being on the back. And uh, you really can't tell from this angle. That'd be tough to second guess an official. You're going to like it if you're an Ohio State fan and dislike it if you're a Cougar fan. Well, he was had a pretty good angle. When you look at him on the replay, he saw something happen in there. Look at Rodnax. Inside the 45, close to the first down. Barry Oates, the defensive tackle, on the stop. You really don't tackle him. You kind of surround him. The guy is just brutal. You know, you block with him, you block with him. Then the fourth period, you start giving him the ball. There's Young, what we were talking about. He's got that jacket on. I mean, to tell you, this temperature has dropped about 20 degrees, and uh, it's chilly. You take a look, and you're seeing some breath out there now. Plus, somebody thinks somebody named Oates is playing both ways. They are brothers. Barry on defense, Bard on offense. For Brigham Young, there are five sets of brothers on this team. That's a first down. Todd Shell, the linebacker on the stop that time, and Rodnax starting to take over some of the workload. Well, does he get a, a, a help up front from Joe Lucan? Guy's been doing it for four years. We got a chance to watch him. Watch him come off the football here. He takes this little stutter step to influence and then goes outside. Now he'll lead up the middle. He's gonna crack on the linebacker. Well, that's a good effort. How about Tim Spencer out there throwing a block? I guess he feels like he owes Broadnax a couple. <laughs> Barry Oates that time on the stop for Brigham Young. Rodnax is now up to 56 yards, and that's normally Earl Bruce's strategy. He'll wear you down with Spencer, and then he starts giving it to the first man. Second and seven, Ohio State at the 35-yard line of Brigham Young with time ticking down to the end of the third quarter. Three. Ohio 
the Ohio State Buckeyes with a great third quarter. After leading 17 to 10 at halftime, at the end of three, it's Ohio State 34, Brigham Young 10. Day bowl. What do they have balance in the third period? Spencer Rush for 51 yards, Broadnax 36. Gale really contributing, has 25, and Tom Zach 14, 126 yards. And for BYU's points. leading rusher has 13. That's Tamaya. That's a very good football team, Fred. I really believe uh, what I've seen on film, the last six ball games, what we've seen tonight, I think they could line up and play with anybody in the country, including uh, Georgia and Penn State. This is a good outfit. I don't see any weaknesses. Hey, well, name a better college football team in the country. I don't think you can pick anybody and say that they are better. This tough club, I agree with you. They're playing as well as anyone in the country right now. Oh, my oh, goodness. Did Tom Zach get cartwheeled into the face mask penalty, I believe. David Opie, the linebacker, made the tackle on the play, and tempers are flurrying on the far sideline. It wasn't intentional. It's unfortunate because he's these guys have gotten after it pretty good and everybody gets a little excited that's what i have never cared for with the face right here it is unintentional it's a line. he just close lines it it was a close line and there's going to be a penalty call and up you just reaching out trying to get a hold of something just happened to make the play that way nothing intentional about it Fred, you know, the headgear is so much harder. They wear the face masks. Football coaches really do like noise, and unfortunately, you get a lot of injuries that way. The soft health headgears, you didn't get many injuries. Kevin Slayton and Ken Woodard will be at the Hall of Fame Bowl. You just saw it. Defense, first down. Call it a personal foul. A head tackle was the terminology on it. And Ohio State, that's a 34 to 10. Whoop. Or Irv Brown's battery of tax accountants on the sideline right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> You're on a roll, Fred. <laughs> Anderson's in motion. Tim Spencer has the football. And he's they're standing straight up at the 15. I'll tell you what you got to love is, is the death march when you give that ball to that tailback over and over again. And uh, when you play for Ohio State, as long as I can remember, somebody just gets the football and just kills you, like a Bob Ferguson tonight, a Tim a Tim Spencer. You get some big tough backs that square up to the line of scrimmage quickly, and they'll hit that hole. Jimmy Gale replaces Spencer now in the backfield for Ohio State. Jemison coming wide to the right side. Gary Williams hasn't been back since being injured in the third quarter. The tight end, John Frank, has been out nearly the entire game. This is Jimmy Gale. Oh, look at him. Talk about a step, and he's out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Yeah, I formation, Ohio State, second down, 18 now. Put Anderson in motion. Tom Zach wants to throw. Has a complete inside the 20, and the man knocked down immediately. Gail, the tailback, the receiver, Marv Allen on the stop for Brigham Young. Ohio State already with 34 points up on the board, and still 13-30 left in the game, and they're threatening again. Fred, every time they've been in trouble, third and long, they've gone to that play out of the slot where they'll clear it out and uh, bring the uh, slot man across. Looks like we've got timeout. Earl Bruce wants to talk it over. He didn't want the timeout, I don't think. There's Tom Zach on the sideline. Four to 10 with 13.27 left in the game. Third and 13 for the Buckeyes, and Tom Zach sets up to throw and has tremendous protection. Look at the BYU people on the ground in the pass. A tremendous catch. They're shy of the goal line, but what a play. Pass is complete. That's Jimmy Gale, the tailback, and what a catch he made her. Boy, did he get some time up front. We've been giving credit to the BYU offensive lineman, but in this case, uh, Lutkin's pack, Roberts, just do a job, and Gale, the backup tailback, who sees a lot of action, makes a sensational catch because he had number 19 for the Cougars all over him in the uh, form of Greg Peterson. Buckeyes threatening once again. That's Cedric Anderson it is with the football. It was Anderson that made a tremendous catch. Flags are down. The ball is in the end zone. Jimmy Gale. Cedric Anderson made that catch. A good football team. They really are. BYU has played well all year long. There's a very excited sideline, and you can see why. Gale, uh, and we incorrectly uh, said he had the pass. It was actually Anderson, his first catch of the night. But then Gale, off the left side behind Bill Roberts, scores, and uh, right now we've got ourselves a runaway. The extra point. Bangers, 
up and good. Timeout here with 12.58. Left in the football game. It's now Ohio State 41, Brigham Young 10. The Aloha Bowl on the Senior Bowl. Let's make that January. First for the Rose Bowl, of course, and the Senior Bowl, January 22nd, 1 o'clock Eastern. Tiamalu moves up, takes it at the 10. Across the 20, the 25, and down he goes. Brigham Young has the football first and 10, 12.53 left in the game, and a ton of work to do her, 41 to 10, Ohio State leading here. Well, of course, nothing is impossible. BYU does have the ability to score in bunches, but what Earl Bruce will do now They'll give you that short stuff and then come up and put the headgear in the back. You're going to see some very deep drops by the linebackers. The secondary is going to play very deep, and they're going to make them grind away. 12.53 remaining. Young, of course, a threat, but he's had a rugged third period. Collie wide to the left side. Ball home wide right. They've got Hudson, the tight end, in the slot out there now, and they set him in motion. Straight back to throw, Steve Young. Drops one over the middle to Wayman Hamilton complete, and a flag is down as Hamilton brings it up to the 30. Highlights of the Sixers in the next games and an NFL preview. Coming up on ESPN, Steve Young has the man complete. That is Eddie Stennett. He takes it out across the 25 and is taken down there by Marcus Merrick, the linebacker. And Cougars are going to look at second down nine here. There's a look at the bench, and it's, it's very rugged. Watch how many white shirts wind up, wind up, that is, around the football. There'll be nine, and that is pursuit. They'll give you that short one, as they do right here. Watch what happens. Remember, they were rushing four. Count the number of white shirts there. That's excellent pursuit. Steve Young looking for the hot hand, has the pass complete to Gordon Hudson to tie it in, and he's stopped by Glenn Cobb, the linebacker, a three-year starter for Ohio Hudson State. Glenn Cobb stop. From Washington Courthouse, Ohio, Miami, Trace High School. Boy, he's a soft-spoken guy, yards, small uh, farming community. He's a good hitter for his size. Marcus Merrick is really complimented by this guy. Merrick, uh, 6'2", about 216. Cobb, a little over 200 pounds, and they really do a job. And voted their most inspirational player by his teammates this year. That always tells you something. Young taking a little deeper drop and gets nailed at the 21 yard line. David it was Dave Cresilius who made the tackle Dave for Ohio Cresilius. State, the fourth sack for the Buckeyes tonight. Cresilius is uh, 6'5, 244, just a sophomore, getting some good action. Look at Earl Bruce. Oh, he's happy. That, uh, that picture tells you a little bit right there. His ball club has put on a clinic tonight. Mike Mays on to punt, hits it, and drives it. Garcia Lane trying to find a wall on the far side. Brings it right back to the 50-yard line and is stopped at midfield. And Ohio State has the ball first and 10 at midfield as Garcia Lane stepped away from uh, Tom Zach really taking over this half. He's 7 for 7, 78 yards. There's a fumble, and Brigham Young is on the ball. Ohio State's first turnover of the ball game. Recovers the fumble for BYU. Well, this is kind of giving them a life now, looking at that bench. They've been down, they've been out. Now they're coming on that field with a little enthusiasm. Everybody still has in the back of their minds what happened against SMU with a miracle finish. He fires with a football and just loses the handle. And Tom Homo is going to recover. There it is. So thank you. Let's see if Young tries to go deep here, uh, Fred. That's the first fumble of the game for OSU. It's going to be tough to throw deep. Let's see if they try it, though. Young slips Stinnett out of the backfield and hits him inside the 50. A shy of the first down. It's going to be second down and about two for Brigham Young. Second down and a short two for Brigham Young. Wayman Hamilton inside the 50, jumps out of bounds, and he is not, didn't get the first down there. That's your old Statue of Liberty, and they ran in uh, into trouble. The best tackler on the field is the sideline, the 12th man. 
BYU is close to the first down, but uh, it will be third and very short. Ten minutes and ten seconds left in this uh, fourth period and final period. Third and about two feet. There's what Steve Young did in the first half and just hasn't had the ball much in the second half. Five out of nine in the second half. They put Hamilton in motion. Young straight ahead has the first down. Young and the keeper. Inside the 45 to the 42 yard line with 10.07 left in the ball game. That's their 12th first down of the evening. Ohio State has 21. BYU's really got to, got to get their plays off quickly if they're to have any chance at all. That's the first game of the game for Steve Young. Normally, he's going to pick up a lot of yardage uh, just on scramble. Now, Cougars just don't run the ball much. In fact, they were minus 15 yards rushing at halftime. They just don't run it. They're not. Look at the drop. How deep is he going? Not deep enough. Yes, he is. Oh, and the man dropped the football. Intended for Eddie Stinnett. I'll tell you what, Steve Young, about a half dozen times in this game, has looked like he was on his way down and got rid of the ball. Dave Morrill that time had the heat on him. You make a good point, Fred. He is extremely strong. He's got that upper body strength. I'm not sure if he's a weightlifter. I'm not sure if that just isn't natural. He stands in there pretty good. Ball home goes wide to the right side. Got Colley wide left. Gives to Wayman Hamilton. And he's got a little working room. Look at that collision at the 35. He's driven out of bounds right there. Wayman Hamilton, pretty good run. Well, that is good running. Take on that tackler, lower that shoulder, protect the football. Hamilton gets out of bounds, which is very important. Tom Anthony made the stop for Ohio State. Take another look at Hamilton, who's had some injury problems, and Tamai has really done a job. Puts it in the left hand. Watch him duck that shoulder and take care of it right there. I mean, oh, that's a lift. Hello. <laughs> Number 21 from Ohio State gets drilled. Pendleton and Edo, the wide receiver. 21 is Kevin Richardson who took the front of that hit and the pass incomplete this time. It's going to be fourth down two, Brigham Young. Ohio State has a lot of second line people in now. Kevin Richardson, the guy we were talking about, number 21. So they're getting some very good experience here. And I got to believe this ball club is going to look forward to spring ball is they have really come on strong. The longest BYU pass second half is 12 yards. Well, the Buckeyes have done a job defensively. Send Colley wide to the right side. Fourth down two. Brigham Young at the 34-yard line of Ohio State. Steve Young is going to throw it on fourth and two. They are not going to try to run the football, and he's in trouble. Now backs away from it. Now gets it up, and he has a man over the middle but misses him. It's incomplete, and Ohio State will take over on down. Well, things just are not going well for the Cougars here tonight. With 9.23 left in this football game, the clock will stop and Ohio State will get the football back. Our score, Ohio State 41, Brigham Young 10. We're back right three left in the football game and Ohio State with the football leading 41 to 10. And Irv, I want to... It's not so much what Brigham Young has done wrong. It's that Ohio State has made so many things happen in the second half of this football game. There's Gordon Hudson, the tight end on the bench of Brigham Young. But you really have to give the Buckeyes credit for forcing turnovers, then taking advantage, and really getting it done on both sides of the ball. Fred, they have great athletes, and they're showing it. There's one of them right here, Jimmy Gale, back up tailback. Look at him, racing to the outside and driven out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Short of the first down, Greg Peterson and Bobby Salazar. Gale made something out of nothing. BYU uh, had the angle on the guy, and Gale turns it into an exceptional game. Let's check and see how many yards Ohio State has out of the two tailbacks, out of Spencer and Gale in this football game. Ohio State. The answer to that question, 207, so they've gotten great production. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Did they snap the ball? <laughs> Jemison comes wide to the right side. Gales the tailback. Tom Zach, under a little pressure, gets rid of the football. Intended for Broadnax and incomplete. It's a hot hand again. We're sticking around just to watch him fight off the uh, bodies hanging all over. The guy is something. I think it's all it's that just been a tremendous that. performance for this Ohio State football team here tonight. It's Exactly what has happened in this football game. Kick well hit. Oh, that ball Carl hit Edwards. him. Let's see if they call it. That ball hit him. Ball is 
down to the 30 yard line by number 41, Keith Meyer. Well, the old eyes have failed. <laughs> Apparently it didn't hit him. <laughs> A 40 yard touchdown. Mike Edo, Kirk Pendleton, the wide receivers. Young fakes the handoff. Getting chased from behind, launches it too deep and incomplete. The pass Young is intended pass for Gordon Hudson, the tight end. And the Ohio State secondary people just come up and put a lick on you every time you come through. That was Doug Hill that did it that time. Look at he's limping a little bit, playing with a cast on his right hand and just dealing out blows every time he sees a blue jersey in the neighborhood. There's Joe Thomas, who was, uh, boy, you make a great point because uh, uh, it's been a long time since I can recall that happening. And off to Scott Pettis. Is Scott Pettis. There wasn't a whole lot there for him that time. Ohio State strung that one out pretty well. Pettis was a high school valedictorian and uh, once again a, a walk on. He's done a good job. He's had some injury problems also. He had a great holiday ball last year. A little guy, 5'9, 175 pound senior from Stockton, California, and Marcus Merrick was the man that made the stop that time. Kirk Pendleton and Mike Edo now the wide receivers. This time Young puts the box in the eye and now sends one in motion. Flags are down. Young fires it up the middle and it's incomplete. Intended for Gordon Hudson. You know it's kind of oh Santa Claus. <laughs> Welcome, Sandy. What's interesting about this, maybe five years ago, Ohio State could not have defended the Brigham Young attack as well as they are right now, but the uh, the Big Ten has gone to the passing game and they've worked against passing teams almost every week. Well, let's see, Tony Eason, they went against Florida State. Uh, Elway isn't too shabby. In fact, the no. best I've ever seen in a college football uniform. And you make a great point. Plus a lot of teams in the conference now that are just throwing it a lot. Collie and Ballholm are wide for Brigham Young. Young sets up, throws, and complete intended for Hudson, and Hudson thought he was interfered with. The officials say no. Tell you what, Ohio State leading 41 to 10. It was Glenn Cobb on the coverage that time, and they're playing like it's a tie football game in that secondary, and linebackers dropping to help. And what's interesting, BYU has protected most of the game extremely well. Now they are tired, they're being wore down, and Young has taken a beat, and he really took a lick that time from Curtis. Mike Mee is on to punt. Garcia Lane deep for Ohio State. Almost blocked, and the flag is down as the punter Meese was hit. People that are playing out and getting <laughs> it done. And you extend that body, and uh, it's just a tough go. We're ready to go. Let's see if Young puts it up quickly in the end zone. I wonder how long you have to practice to get good at that. <laughs> Young fires. It has complete to Mike Ghetto. And he's inside the 15-yard line, and the Cougars have a first down. Ghetto did a great job. Yeah. He did a great job of finding the seam uh, of that zone defense that time. Here's another look. Here's a little left-hander, still strong, little flea flicker. That's a fine route. A number 45 for BYU. Mike Ghetto. Mike Ghetto. The junior from San Clemente, California. Young is closing in, Fred, on the 300-yard mark, 294, 23 of 41. Young again, straight back to throw. Complete up the middle, Gordon Hudson, touchdown, Brigham Young. Well, the Cougar fans get something to cheer about. The 7.09 left in the game. Excellent patience here by Young as he waits for Hudson to work free. The front line gives him good protection. Here's the left-hander going over the 300-yard mark, and look at the contact right there. A lot of lockout blocking. Hudson is determined to find the end zone. He missed a sure touchdown in the first half. So it's 40 to uh, 41 to 16. Gordon Hudson knew where the goal line was. Hudson with six catches for stall tonight. Jimmy Gale is back with him. Ohio State expects it to be an onside. They've got the hands team in there. That means everybody who's got some skill out of a skill position, nine of them are lined up with, uh, between the 40 and 50 yard line. Only Spencer and Gale are deep. Well, I don't think anybody expects anything but an onside kick. Spencer with 
20 carries, 161 yards, two touchdowns in a game, a 61-yard touchdown running and an 18-yarder. What a night he has had. The lefty will boot it left if they onside. It is the onside kick. It goes far enough, and Ohio State, I believe, has it covered. They do. That's the bump kick, kick and I thought that Lavelle Edwards might go for that because of the defensive setup. That was the strategy, but uh, Ohio State has the answer, and they have the football with 7.07 remaining. They lead it 41-17. Well, and if you're Lavelle Edwards, you have to do that. You're, you're still trying to win the football game, trying to get back in it. You've got to get it back, and when it doesn't work, you really give up some field position. That's just what happened that time. Ohio State has it at the 49-yard line, first and 10. And that miracle comeback against SMU, they had an onside, and a defensive back, Billy Shefflin, recovered it. Well, remember this. In that game, they were down 20 points with a little over four minutes to play in the game and came back and won it. They're down 24 here with 6.59 to play. <laughs> Tim Spencer with the ball again. Brent Offenbecker's in the game now, a quarterback for Ohio State. Saw a little action during that three-game losing streak when uh, Earl Bruce did uh, opt to... Uh, take Mike Tomzak out of there. So uh, Offenberger has had some experience this year. Jemison and Anderson wide right. Wally is the tight end. And off. Looks like Kevin Lindsay, uh, the guy Fred, who went off the left side and up front, he's still following. Guy who's done a bang up job the entire game, Billy Roberts. 6'5", 270. Kelvin, Just a junior. Kelvin Lindsay with his first carry of the night. And Ohio State looks at third down in the yard at the 43-yard line of Brigham Young. Ren Offenbecker. Hand off to Kelvin Lindsay again. May not have the first down. It's pretty close. Offenbecker transferred from Wake Forest. He's directing the attack. Let's see if they measured or uh, say it's fourth down. Does Earl Bruce want to punt it away or... Try and pick it up here. 544 remaining. Well, Irvine was 41 to 10, and it's showing up here now. One thing you know, there's great character on both sides of that football, and if Brigham Young gets an opportunity to get something done on this ball game, they're gonna go do it. You don't go eight and three in major college football, and that's what both sides did this year. Unless you got character. Look at this. Look at this run. Jimmy Gale. Jimmy Gale out of the tailback spot. Bangs us straight ahead to the 32 and a first down. First down, Buckeye. Tim Spencer, our MVP, but boy, Jimmy Gale hadn't heard his uh, uh, stats tonight at all. Guys run extremely well. Let's take another look at Jimmy. 5'10", 190, a senior from Hampton, Virginia. Got a brother playing the defensive back, and look at him shake and bake. He now has 10 carries, 56 yards. Nothing there for Ohio State this time. Five minutes and one second left in this football game, and Ohio State leading Brigham Young 41-17. And before the night gets okay, away, we want to thank the Holiday Bowl people here in San Diego for making it a pleasant trip for us. It's a young bowl, but it's a bowl that really has, has caught on with a lot of people. Of course, they've had the great games. Uh, tonight, it isn't a close thing, but there have been some super ones. Offenbecker fires it up the middle, and it's incomplete. That was intended for Judd Groza, the tight end. Lou's youngest son. Dave Neff defending for Brigham Young. Tell you what, what would a football game in the yard at Thanksgiving be like at the Groza House, do you suppose? <laughs> <laughs> of course, he was really stuffed. And all I remember is a cold day uh, in Cleveland, and he'd be kicking off of snow, and he'd have those oh. high tops. And <laughs> he wasn't a sidewinder. He was a straight-on kicker. Ohio State looking at third down 11. Trent Penn was in motion. This is Jimmy Gale. Some room up the sidelines, and he's out of bounds down around the 15-yard line. First down and he's out of Jimmy Gale just continues to do good work. John Mannion made the stop for Brigham Young. I tell you what, Ohio State has had some tailback play in this game. Here they come, and you you call it. Their tailbacks have done an exceptional job. Jimmy Gale with four-five speed shows you it right there. He's a senior, and somebody's going to take a shot at him. He'll be drafted. Don't get forget. that kind of speed. After the game, Sports Center with Sal Marciano and Lou Palmer. All the basketball scores, some highlights of the Sixers and Knicks games, and a preview of the NFL action this weekend. Gale again, straight ahead. Jimmy Gale for four Very yards. close to the 15-yard line, knocked down at the 16 with four minutes and 15 seconds left in the football game. 
Two bowl games coming your way tomorrow night on ESPN. The California Bowl, Kevin Slayton will be on hand. The Tangerine Bowl, Sam Rosen and Paul McGuire. I'd like to thank our spotters, Dennis Webb, Charles Browning. Dennis, a player, Brigham Young, a senior who injured a knee this year. Been a long second half, I know, but they're all doing a great job. Keith Byers, the freshman tailback with it that time. You're talking about that California Bowl, Bowling Green, a look at Earl Bruce going against Fresno and so many rumors about Jim Sweeney will he go into the USFL with Arizona Jim has visited with him he's a good coach he was up at Washington State he's been around the horn a little bit there ever been a more underrated conference down through the years than the mid-america boy they play they really do yeah, Miami of Ohio Bowling Green at times have they dumped Ball State they're good it's fun to watch too good round of ball well they've dumped some big ball clubs down through the years they've had some good football wins out of that conference Football at the 10 yard line and may be first down for Ohio State. Ohio State has rushed the football 61 times tonight and they've been thrown for three losses. You know, the fun broad Max in his career has been thrown for losses four times. That many? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, he's tough when they play him at middle guard. Uh, that is the place for the tender hearted. We'll get a measurement here. This thing's over with 302 remaining. Ohio State has just put on an awesome. Uh, display tonight. BYU will be two and three in this bowl. They lost the first two. Come back uh, and beat Washington State last year, SMU two years ago. It's going to be fourth down and a teensy bit <laughs> for Ohio State. Earl Bruce getting a lot of people some playing time here now. Offenbecker, Jimmy Gale at the tailback, straight ahead for the first down. Offenbecker, the quarterback. Keith Byers is operating at the fullback. Fred, it wouldn't be proper unless we commented on Bear Bryant's retirement. Has anybody meant so much to a university as Bear Bryant? Those players, I got a couple of calls today from guys who have played for Bear, one of them coached for him. Just an incredible human being done a fantastic job and we wish him well Ray Perkins has got some big shoes to uh, follow well step into man has been a class act at Alabama and he's adjusted with the times whether he's running the wishbone or the pro set the bear uh, had the ability to do it Jimmy Gale hemmed in just shy of the 10 yard line and taken down there and a late flag goes down as and it is it's working down Alabama they got a good ball club Jimmy Gale inside the five, touchdown. Jimmy Gale put the little frosting on the cake with 2.05 left in the game. Well, I gotta say the guy deserved a touchdown. He's done a great job tonight. He really has done an excellent job filling in for Spencer. We'll get a look at Gale off the left side. They block down, pull a guard. Number 79 getting out and laying him down is Mike Malchuk. Gale now has 82 yards and BYU just is been wore down by a ball club. Well, got a lot of horses. And there's a the guy who knows that uh, the better ball club won tonight. Well, Val Edwards, that look on his face just says it all. He hasn't gone through many days like this in his collegiate coaching career at Brigham Young, but it's been a tough one for him here tonight. 205 left in this contest. Rich Spangler. Then oh, misses it. Snow, member of the Alabama Athletic Department, is being a very And here with 205 left in this game, Ohio State. Spangler hits it very high and short. Giamola takes it. Look at him come rocketing up the middle across the 30, the 35, and the 45 yard line. Casey Giamola finally knocked down by Garcia Lane, junior cornerback for Ohio State. Tim I will be back next year, just a junior. He's squad at 5'8 and 205. He's had some problems tonight, but I like that uh, kickoff return there. He's done a very good job, you know. As we look at a lot of empty seats, but Tamaya was just picked up uh, for insurance. And he ends up their leading rusher. Junior college transfer makes his well, home is here in San Diego. Stephen Young. Look at Ohio State still coming. Now Young's going to run it inside the 50. Oh, oh, did he get hit at the 43-yard line? Young King. 
Dave Young took a lick. Dave Cresselia. Boy, you just hope he gets up with that one. Fortunately, it's not down low because that's, he doesn't have a tender heart. He doesn't slide into second base as most quarterbacks do. He's trying to run for a touchdown, and he gets crunched. Garcia right Light coming here. one way, and here comes Cresselius from the other direction. And oh, did he take a shot? And there goes Young off the field, and he has to be hurting. Garcia Lane was getting all of Young's attention when Dave Cresselius Lane came from Fowler, the other direction. Cresselius, oh. just a sophomore from Ashland, Ohio, gave the Ohio State coaches something to remember. One more time, you want to be a quarterback that scrambles. That's nice, but boy, that's when you get crunched. And boy, that's underneath the headgear, and hopefully. The youngster didn't get his jaw broken. Steve Young threw for over 300 yards tonight. He was sensational just going against a, a ball club that uh, had just a much better night and has better athletes. So Blaine Fowler takes over at the quarterback now for Brigham Young. Okay, you want me to just do and gets complete with his first pass inside the 35 to the 33 yard line. They're close to another first down. Then not that amazing how a kid can come in ice cold? Look at this. Young is coming back in. Uh, you talk about some big guts. There's Young back in. Oh, my gosh. Boy, I tell you, I like that guy. Well, Blaine Fowler's going off the field with a perfect night, one for one. Well, if anybody wondered how tough Steve Young might be, don't wonder anymore. As tough as you can get. Second end. Just took a ferocious lick and right back in the ball game after one play. And look at him stand in the pocket and throw a completion. And that's a first down for Brigham Young. Why well, is trying Jones. to get one here, Fred? Make it respectable. They're down 47-17. Take a timeout. I can go to Hudson on a cross. Let's see if that's what we get. Steve Young with a first and ten. Protection holding up well. He guns it towards the end zone, and it's incomplete. And tennis for Gordon Hudson was almost intercepted that time. We have a flag down. It will go against Ohio State with 58 seconds left. Let's see what Joe Thomas has. Had a lot of flags in the second half. The people got a little tired and were hanging on a little, little bit. This is a Southwest Conference crew. They'll move the crews around. Here's Joe Thomas. That microphone may run on batteries, and it's a three and a half hour game, and the batteries have run down. <laughs> it is first and goal at the nine for Brigham Young. Steve Young with a long count. Now looks in the end zone. Now he's going to run it out of there. A flag is down, and he's still on his feet. And look at him battle inside the five. And Steve Young, who just had to come off the field after taking a ferocious look a little while ago, would not go down that time. Isn't going to count. Rex Birmingham was holding, and they'll bring it back. But what an effort by Young. I still can't believe he got up from that sandwich shot. Oh. The Ohio State cheerleaders, very happy group, needless to say. Well, a lot of people came a long way from Columbus, Ohio, and in that area to watch their ball club. That's great support. A lot of them around our hotel. <laughs> Holding, you got it. Brings the football back up. And it's first and goal now from the 19 yard line instead of the nine. Young, there you see him in the huddle trying to just catch a breath. Told you they're happy. Should be, their football team has played great. Don't forget, Sports Center upcoming after this football game. Sal Marciano standing by along with Lou Palmer. All the basketball scores from this evening's action. NFL preview. Will be a part of it. Young back to throw. Chase hit, still on his feet. He's going to cut it loose, and he has a complete. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. I think that left hander hasn't gained some now. fans tonight. Oh. Hey, Young was down. What a lick. All right, they're hustling. There's Young still taking charge, showing that leadership. Clock Nin running at 20. 19 seconds left in the game. 
And we have a timeout taken here. Brigham Young is going to call a timeout to stop the clock with 17 seconds left. Here was the contact, and Young refuses to go down. Boy, that's determination. Oh, I like him. Gets the ball off, so BYU still trying to, to knock one in. Takes the timeout after they let about seven or eight seconds run off the clock. Here's Young. Looks like his right arm is bothering him. I'll tell you what, bit. he's hurt. He is hurting. He didn't want to come out. Look, they say, hey, come on out. He said, uh-uh. You got to like that young man. <laughs> There's a lot of courage wrapped up inside that number eight jersey. You're looking at a left hand of Bobby Lane right there. I'm not coming out. The Ohio State folks, as we told you, plenty of reason to be happy along the sideline. 17 seconds left in this game. They've won it. And they know it. It's 47 to 17. The Buckeyes leading Brigham Young. And if you're wondering again what's happened in the basketball world tonight, you'll find out from Sal Marchano and Lou Palmer on Sports Center right after this game. And the bowl action continues tomorrow night on ESPN. Well, he didn't come out. He won the argument. And Steve Young is going to bring the ball club out of the huddle again. Mike Edo wide to the left side. Hudson in the slot right. Scott Colley wide right. Young. Fakes, doesn't throw. Look at his protection. In the end zone and incomplete. Intended for Colley. Penalty flag. And a penalty flag is down. May have been interference. Well, I don't think so. It's down in the backfield. Looks like we got another holding call. Is that a roughing the passer? I've never seen anybody stand in the pocket with more cool. The number eight, Steve Young. The man is absolutely fearless. Watched the quarterback by the name of Craig Morton the last four or five years at Denver just retired. And uh, I thought no one could stand in like Morton and keep uh, from throwing an interception, keep from throwing a ball. But this guy, for a college youngster, is something else. Er, if I'd have known that my great, great, great grandson was going to be that good a quarterback, I'd have started school for him to play football. <laughs> <laughs> Fred White University. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's been a long night. Stay with us. Only 10 more seconds. <laughs> one of, one of 5,000 descendants of Brigham Young quarterbacking this football team with a younger brother there. Ten seconds, they'll put it in the end zone. Look at him scramble around now, wanting to throw it, decides to run it. And trying to get out of bounds, stops the clock with two seconds left in the game. Does he that man ever bounds. quit? No. Look hey, he, he knows he's got a little time, he jumps out of bounds. I mean, this guy's going to get it into the end zone. Now, somehow, he's going to find a way. He's had two holding calls. Say what? He's been knocked uh, silly. I think he was out on his feet when they took him out of there. Whoever runs the Steve Young fan club, put me in. Just a junior, he'll be back next year in the Western Athletic Conference. New Mexico went 10-1 this year. Joe Morrison left for the South Carolina job. Good race. Edo goes wide right, Collie wide left. Two seconds left in the game, and Steve Young trying to put one more on the board. Close, complete, and Collie can't get it in the end zone. The football game is over. score here tonight. The Holiday Bowl, Ohio State 47, Brigham Young 17. We'll be back. I've got $100,000 in this rig, and I protect my investment with Kendall Motor Oil. So, when my son asks, this isn't